What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the City Life Project YouTube channel for yet another fight companion. This week, we are back in the all-women's MMA promotion in Victa FC for the 52nd promotional event. And we have a great main event for this card, the Strawweight Championship Oh my goodness, it's going to be a fun one. And we have a lot of women making their pro MMA debuts as well on this card. We've done one Invicta event before. It was fun. We love supporting the women here on this channel as well as women's mixed martial arts. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Join our community here by commenting in the live chat, by voting in the poll question, like and subscribe. We have a ton of fight companions coming up this week. Oh, Boy, is it a busy week for mixed martial arts. We got Invicta tonight. We got one championship, KSW and BKFC on Friday. That's right. Three fight companions back to back to back on Friday, followed by UFC 286 on Saturday. That's right. Leon Edwards, Kamaru Usman 3. Again, if you're new to the channel, like and subscribe. And let's get right to the comments here before we start highlighting the first two fighters on this card. What is up, Foul One? Thank you so much for joining. It is time indeed, Professor Chaos. Glad to see you as well. Out of Bayou, what's going on, brother? It's good to see you as well. Diego, hope you're feeling better, dude. Excited to start this week off with a little Invicta FC 52, a live event midweek. Can't complain, can't complain. What is up, Grave Digger Jones? Thank you so much for joining, buddy. It's good to see you. Oh, yeah, it's ladies' night, and I'm feeling right. Uh, you added BKFC, let's go. I replaced the the, 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 the freaking PFL Challenger series with BKFC. You know, like four fights or whatever it was, five fights, I guess, this week for Challenger series, the wannabe Dana White's contender series, which, I mean, it's been okay. I've, I've rewatched a few of them. Well, I've rewatched all of them, to be perfectly honest, and they're, they're fine, but to... To be perfectly honest, it was the the one that we did the fight companion for the women's week. What was it, week two? That was the most entertaining. What was it? Three out of the four fights were finishes, and they were actually pretty damn good performances. Um, the rest of them have been a little come see, come saw on the wannabe Dana White's contender series show. We got an awesome BKFC card on Friday. So I figured, you know what? You know what? I'd rather do BKFC. I know you would all rather I do BKFC as well. I know BKFC would rather we do BKFC because they always join us in the live chat and shoot us some praise as well. 
Yeah, Diego, how's your leg doing, buddy? How's your leg doing? Uh, I know Diego. He wasn't. He was in the hospital a couple weeks ago, in an accident there. I know. Uh, I know. A few days ago, you said you were doing better. I hope that um, you're feeling even better than then, Mr. Diego. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, no wobbly pops for me here today, ladies and gentlemen. Just drinking some tea midweek. Taking uh taking a week off the taking a week off the beers. It was it was a busy week. Had a, a live show for my podcast at a brewery. Had my podcast and my co-host podcast, the State of Hoppy, our beer released in collaboration with the great people at Loose Line during Big Beer Week. So we went for the release party, and you know that was just a whole night of in itself. And then Friday was the Minnesota High School State Hockey Tournament. We spent the entire day there, 9 a.m. to midnight, drinking and watching hockey. Then Saturday, right after the Glory Stream, um, we went out went to a bunch of different breweries and celebrated my buddy and my roommate's 30th birthday. So it's been a hell of a week. And then Monday we all got like a stomach flu. So recovering here with some uh, green tea. I've been drinking green tea all goddamn day, eh, Shane. <laughs> all right. First fighters are about to make their walkout to the octagon. Now continue the comments, folks. It is a comment driven live stream, live play by play, live commentary, live reaction, and most importantly, live interaction with all you amazing folks in the live chat. We had a fun exclusive member stream right before this. If you missed it and you're an exclusive member, please go check it out. We talked about the news in the world of MMA this week, Darren Till fighting Logan Paul in boxing. And Darren Till basically doesn't have any knees right now upon leaving the UFC. Alistair Overeem, 12-month suspension from glory. They remove him from the rankings. Is he going to go to one championship? Is he going to go to Ryzen to finish off his career? And of course, Francis Ngannou is ready to sign with either the PFL or one championship as both of them are in a bidding war for his services. All that and more in the exclusive membership stream. So if you're not an exclusive member, check it out. You know, c- consider becoming an exclusive member to get additional streams every single week. I tapped uh, out on it and just going to see PFL 2 on ESPN+. Plus. Look, I, I like the PFL, just the Challenger series. I'm like, eh, maybe whatever but uh yes grave digger jones i think you joined us for that one shane saying yo i just got done the dishes speaking of exclusive members shane is an exclusive member shane we going beer bets on this one we going beer bets on this one as we highlight the fighters here aca has a great card on saturday 7 30 a.m yeah well i'm doing <laughs> i think i'm doing enough streams this week professor chaos that i need a little bit of a break on saturday before ufc and ufc it's early right i believe it starts at like one o'clock my time. So um, I- I'm doing four on Friday. I hope that's enough for you guys. I hope five streams this week is enough for you guys. Uh, ACA does have a great card. I'll probably have it on in the background uh, while I'm probably doing laundry at that point. Cause I'm getting down to like the last few pair of boxers folks. Uh, how about nice winning the big 10 player of the year? Hey, let's go Gophers. Let's go Gophers. <laughs> Got to recover that gut, man. Absolutely, guys. I lost 15 pounds Monday night. If that doesn't, <clears throat> if that doesn't demonstrate how sick I was, <laughs> I don't know what does. Shane saying I'm picking Kendra for the first one. Okay, I'm gonna get through the rest of these comments here. I see, I see you, Tom. Um, no, I do love the early cards, Professor Chaos. I do. We will be doing. Don't worry. One championship on Friday. If I'm feeling up to it, maybe I'll squeeze it in on Saturday. But no promises. No promises. Okay. Um, I'll get right back to your comments here in just a moment, folks. Keep them coming, and I'll I'll, I'll fire through them. Don't you worry. But I do want to highlight these fighters here. There's a little there's a little promo going on screen for them. But Shane and I, we got the beer bets, and I want to hear your guys's predictions for these fights as well. Opening this card, we have Deanna Sanchez against Kendra McIntyre. Uh, Deanna Sanchez, she's one and one in her pro MMA career. She is the underdog plus 275 at 26 years of age. She is, ooh, she is two and four on the amateur scene, one and one as a professional, and she lost her last fight. Where Kendra McIntyre looks like Kendra McIntyre, a kickboxing champion, making her MMA debut here. And guys, Joe Martinez, one of my favorite ring announcers, is making the call here tonight announcing these women. This is in Denver, Colorado. So 
elevation could play a factor. I'm going with the favor. I'm going with the kickboxer, Kendra, locking it in. Shane's picking Kendra for the first uh, for the first one. She's locking it in. I know it's freaking nuts, man. I don't even blame Overeem. I thought the horse meat was expected. Dude, I can't believe Glory is testing even. You know, and and Badahari wasn't on some. Come on, come on. No collusion whatsoever. What's up, Tom? It's good to see you, buddy. It goes without saying that we're doing beer bets. At a boy, Shane. At yeah, a shit boy. Beautiful than a motherfucker. And as I said, I love early cards too, but I think I'll be a little gassed after streaming. What is it going to be like 10 hours on Saturday, but professor chaos, if I'm up for it, I'll, I'll try to do it for you, brother. Shane, I record each win on my phone and on paper. I love it. Shane. That is awesome. Uh, grave is going with Kendra. Oh, city of sunrise is uploading a new video right now, guys. If you haven't already subscribed to the city of sunrise, professor chaos only have one bet. This card, uh, Dinah Silva, one unit minus 175. All right, first fight of the evening. Let's, Let's get, it on. get it on. Again, folks, 125 pound catch weight, three five minute rounds here. And going for the takedown right away is Sanchez here. Defending it up against the cage is McIntyre. Putting the ticker on the bottom of the screen to reflect the rounds here, folks. Uh, Kim Moto Cute. In my opinion, Ramang Nawang, in my opinion, Gipakki, in my opinion, Panae Mod Mod, in my opinion, Nong. Oh, I guess it's not in my opinion. You're just speaking a different language. Welcome, Kim. My apologies for that, <laughs> but welcome to the stream. Thank you for your predictions. You know what, Kim? I'm going to lock them all in. Thank you so much for joining, Kim. I appreciate it. Anyone see the MMA hour? Did Connor say it was supposed to be Nate in tough? I watched bits and pieces of the MMA hour today, but I did not hear that. I'm going to re-listen to it tonight as I do my stretches before bed. Yeah, that's right. I'm one of those nerds who stretch before bed. <laughs> it's my way of zenning out before I go to sleep. And Sanchez finally gets the takedown at 3 minutes and 42 seconds. McIntyre doing a good job of getting right back up to her feet, but Sanchez grabbing her back and she has a left hook in. Sanchez, toe was in the cage there. Good job on the official for being right on top of her. Telling her she can't do that. Looking for that takedown again is Sanchez going for the clinch again. McIntyre making her pro MMA debut here. Sanchez is one and one in pro MMA. Only one and four in her last five fights, including amateur. Again, shout out to everybody joining here today. Professor Chaos only has one bet on this card. As he mentioned in the live chat. So kickboxing and tie boxing background for McIntyre here. So she's not used to being clinched up up against the cage like this, but some good elbows on the side of Sanchez's head here. And she employs some good defense up in the clinch. Back up against the cage still is McIntyre. You gotta imagine though that she did prepare for a grappling heavy affair here in Invicta. In her promo May debut, getting the right hook in is Sanchez looking to try to get on the back of McIntyre. Again, folks, Denver, Colorado, where the elevation is high. Oh, and Sanchez falls on her back here. An up kick by Sanchez. A huge up kick by Sanchez. But McIntyre lands a couple shots of her own on the ground and pound. Sanchez laying on her back here, trying to employ that up kick again by the looks of it. And McIntyre invites her back up to her feet. Even I headed the Peter Pan and Wendy trailer. I'm excited for the young actress Ever Gabo Anderson who played in Black Widow. Yeah, that was a weird. Uh, and, and I watched uh, I watched that video, uh, City of Sunrise. Been digging your new content, buddy, and loving the grind. But yeah, it was weird. Uh, Grave Digger Jones is in fact the Reaper Jones on Twitter. Oh, and a nice low kick by McIntyre there. And it looks like some swelling on the right eye of Sanchez already here. One minute and 36 seconds left on the clock, folks. McIntyre trying to go for a low kick against Sanchez. Check that one. McIntyre pushing forward now. <laughs> you can hear the corner of McIntyre. Touch the body, touch a nice straight left by McIntyre, followed by a body kick by McIntyre. Right hand by Sanchez, but seemed like a muffin shot there. Again, McIntyre in the blue corner. 
And McIntyre, now, oh, the beautiful one, two, and a knee combo by McIntyre. One minute and five seconds left in this first round. I have heard of the actress. Not going to lie, buddy. You're, you're the one getting me back into movies. I'm so busy with this channel and work and my podcast and just sports that I haven't watched a lot of movies lately. The last movie I watched was that, uh, Gla was it called Glass Onion? That m murder mystery movie. I watched the first one and second one, which I thought they were good. Thoughts on the UFC fighters getting upset at the MMA guru? Um, I mean, I, th I thought Dan Hooker's response was the best. <laughs> <laughs> MMA guru's a troll. It's a shtick. Absolutely. That, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Like, did he perhaps go a little far in this day and age? Sure, but far for me? No. I mean, if, if, you, if you know what the guru has been doing, if you know that he actually... And Sanchez, by the way, got a takedown with the final 10 seconds. If you know his shtick, if you know that his whole game isn't necessarily just to troll, if you know that the content he puts out is different than the live streams and his membership streams, that's the end of the first round, folks, then I feel like the fighters would have a different tune because he is a breath of fresh air. He is a unique voice in the MMA content creation space. And you know what? Other MMA content creators, for the most part, I would say 8 out of 10, um, eight out eighty percent agree with that. I think you know the Terrence McKinney's trying to dox him. That that's ridiculous. I think a lot of people just judging him and everything off that one clip, which was one of the most animated clips I've ever seen of him. Which I thought it was hilarious. I actually used that clip as a meme, um, on a hockey side and said, uh, to how I feel about everybody who hates Ryan Reeves. If anyone's who's a hockey fan, you'll know Ryan Reeves. And then it's him going off on Marab. You know, I, I thought that was funny. Um. Yeah, I, I think the fighters and the MMA content creators and, you know, even even my boy from Canada, Aaron Bronstetter, I think it, they're just judging him off that one clip and that's not fair. Now, was it was it intense? Was it a little crazy? Was it a little colorful? Absolutely. You know, did, did was it treading over the politically correct line? Sure. Yeah. But that's what I love, baby. Now, look, I'm not hating on Marab as much as him. I think Marab actually had a great performance, but... It is what it is. Let's get it all. Round two, folks. What is up, Luke? Thank you so much for joining. Um, folks, I think Kendra won that first round despite Sanchez getting that takedown. Kendra definitely did more damage and got back up to her feet and did a good job of defending the takedowns. Going for the single leg, though, four minutes and 30 seconds on the clock here. Sanchez again. Yeah, Sanchez, you can see, doesn't have a lot of striking to her game. And Kendra making her... Pro MMA debut is actually doing a decent job here defending the grappling heavy game of a Sanchez. Now, McIntyre's on her back here. Let's see how she can work here from her back. The former Thai and Muay Thai kickboxer. I'm doing the Fifth Element 97 movie where Mila Jovovich played as Lilo. Love the lineup, City of Sunrise. I like how you mix up the old movies and the new movies too. Uh, he's super knowledgeable. MMA, I understand is controversial, but he's great at what he does and is very funny. Yep, absolutely. And look, it's not everyone's cup of tea. Should they try to cancel him? Absolutely not. I'm interested on which promotion will get Francis because it's going to be damn good. I'm hoping. He says it's PFL or one championship. Oh, and it looks... Oh, I love how there's open scoring in Invicta. I totally forgot about that. So yeah, it looks like all three judges scored at 10-9 for Kendra in that first round, and that is the correct score, in my opinion. Um, I'm interested in on which promotion we'll get Francis. Yes, going back to that, I really hope it's one championship, man. I really hope it's one championship. I think they'll pay him more overall. I think the PFL will pay him kind of like maybe $5 million per fight. And then he'll obviously be competing in the season for the one mil. But I think one championship can pay him more than that per fight. And I know he's not a Muay Thai fighter, but might as well throw him in that open weight Grand Prix because if he's going up against <laughs> smaller guys, he's going to decapitate them. Not literally YouTube. Please don't demonetize me for that statement. YouTube has not been kind to me lately, folks. I'm just going to say that. And back up to her feet and actually getting the back of Sanchez is McIntyre. McIntyre now going for a takedown. If I was McIntyre right now, I would just separate and try to strike this woman. I don't know why she's going for a takedown in her own right. She's got the hooks in. Nice knee to the body. And it looks like Sanchez is slowing down tremendously. Again, folks, Denver, Colorado, where the elevation is high. It's going to be interesting to see how all of these fighters tend down the stretch here. But look at the legs of McIntyre compared to 
the chicken legs of Sanchez here. You can tell that she was a Muay Thai and kickboxer. Yeah, dude, McKinney tried to dox him in his live stream. I don't watch many of the Guru's live streams because that's not the content of him that I personally enjoy. Um, But f- I think that's when I was like starting to get sick. So I was literally sitting on the toilet <laughs> watching that live stream. And yeah, he, he was trying to get his, his address. Yeah, anyways, there's a whole thing about Guru made a response video and it was hilarious. Because it's open scoring, they don't have live odds, so I don't like it. Fair enough, fair enough. I prefer open scoring personally. I love, and again, I I don't, I can't bet in my state, so that's why. But uh, totally understand that. My favorite part of Glory Kickboxing is because uh, there's five judges with the with the live scoring, and it's just super interesting to see, you know, some of the discrepancies between the five judges. But no, if you're if you're a betting person like our boy Professor Chaos here, totally understand. I think Ngannou's focusing on boxing first fight, then goes MMA, MMA promotion. Yeah, that's what he said. He was on Ariel show today, and he literally said that the Deontay Wilder fight is getting close, and that this summer he will box, but he he will sign with an MMA promotion first. And the MMA promotion that are in a bidding war for him right now are one championship in the PFL, um, which is crazy that Bellator is not even in on it. Oh, a nice body shot by Kendra. Kendra right now is piecing up Sanchez on the feet body shots really showing off her kickboxing here with 41 seconds left in this second round catching the leg I mean look at that kickboxing catching the leg right hand to the face kicks to the body Kenja for MMA pro MMA debut looking damn good and again against a a lesser opponent but a woman who has Two pro MMA fights. And I want a nice left hand by Kendra McIntyre. And Kendra McIntyre doing a good job of stuffing the takedown as now she has the back up against the cage. Final 10 seconds of this second round. Um, so yeah. Oh, and a nice slam takedown by Sanchez there. Getting right close to getting back up to her feet is Kendra McIntyre, but that is the end of the second round. Again, I'll have to say that Kendra McIntyre won that second round. So I believe she is up two rounds to none. Hey, Sanchez landed a few good shots in that exchange there. But, oh, a nice elbow before the takedown that was stuffed there by Kendra McIntyre. Um, but yeah, Francis Ngannou candidly said that I am going to box first. The MMA promotion that is going to sign me, they know this. They know that he's probably not going to be fighting MMA. Hell, maybe not even in 2023. And if it is in 2023, it will be the end of 2023. But uh, that the, the the two promotions that he is probably the, the two promotions that are bidding for him and his contract is one championship and PFL. What about Alistair Overeem though, guys? One championship or Ryzen? Oh my God! Could you imagine? Alistair Overeem with the soccer kicks and rising. My goodness. Have you ever seen women heavyweights? Just one. Gabby Garcia. She fights in rising. There is not a belt. And there's there's not even really a division. It's a, kind of like a super fight catchweight division. And you can probably guess, Shane, it's in rising. And Gabby Garcia. Gabby Garcia, she's absolutely like, she is shredded. Um, probably if not guaranteed on the juice as she's mostly a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner and, and a damn good one, you know, ADCC champion, flow grappling champion. Oh, beautiful catching of the leg and sweep kick by Kendra. Third round has started with 30 seconds. A nice right hand by Kendra McIntyre. She doesn't seem to be slowing down at the same rate as a Deanna Sanchez, folks. Meet my ex-girlfriend, Shane. <laughs> I know there's there there are quite a bit of you know bigger women, and I'm not saying bigger women as unhealthy women. I'm saying bigger women as big jacked women like Gabby Garcia on the on the juice or not, um, who are asking some of these promotions like an Invicta, like Rise, and like One if they can have their own. But let's put it this way, guys. There's not even enough talent in the 145, hell, 155 division for women, let alone 170 up, right? There's just not enough talent out there. Now, if the doors were opened 
for just catch weight spouts for bigger women and promotions like Invicta, like Ryzen, like they've already have started doing it more. Maybe it paves the way, but uh, there's just more women of the 115 to 145 stature than, than there are who, who are fighting as professional athletes than there are heavyweight women. Like that's, that's just facts. I think Francis will look worse than Connor did versus Floyd. I wonder how bad boxing loss would affect his stock. Well, that that's the thing. It might affect his stock, but at the end of the day, it won't matter because he's already going to be under contract. So he's actually pretty smart, making sure that he's going to be locked up with an MMA. Like, like Professor Chaos, this could happen next week, the way he made it sound on, on Ariel's show. I, I honestly thought he was going to announce it on Ariel's show, given the news that dropped a couple days ago, that those are the final two promotions that he was considering two minutes and 34 seconds left in this third round, a good dragging down of McIntyre. And now maybe going for a triangle choke here with the high guard of a Sanchez, but McIntyre is in the top position here looking to lay down some ground and pound and, or get back up to her feet. If she desires two minutes and 12 seconds left on the clock. Oh God, you would have believed how many people on Twitter think she oh Gabby Garcia. Oh, I've seen him. And then you know what? F- fuck them. She's a tremendous ass- athlete. Oh, back up to their feet. Big elbows. Okay, they're both slowing down now. Big elbows by McIntyre here. Desperately going for a takedown again is Sanchez. You could argue that for 50% of Invicta's roster. I think Invict does Invicta even have a 155? I don't even think they have a 155 or even 145. Actually, no, they do have 145. Because Cyborg uh, used to run Invicta. Megan Anderson, she's a big, she's a big girl as well. Tall woman. Now on the mic. Which goes back to the poll question, by the way, folks. Uh, who's the greatest woman's fighter to ever compete in Invicta? Let me know. <laughs> Fallon Fox was a completely different story. Which, since YouTube's already demonetizing me left, right, and center for doing fight content, we won't even get into that conversation here. But uh, I'm very, mu- I'm very much a oh, go for a heel hook, going for a heel hook. Against Sanchez doesn't look like it's too tight though. 45 seconds left. What I will say on the whole Fallon Fox thing, and if if those women are going to compete, there should be a separate division just for them. And I think that's perfectly fair, and I don't think that's unjust at all. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, JK, Kendra looks exactly like your ex. Dude, she's beautiful. So props to you, Fat One. 15 seconds left here. Sanchez kind of on her side right now just holding McIntyre here not really doing any damage look for McIntyre's first ever fight in Invicta at elevation coming from a kickboxing and Muay Thai background she did a pretty good job and I think that she won this fight hands down as she won the first two rounds handedly she got Hey, she's, she's wearing it a little bit as she has some welts under her right eye, huffing and puffing. I mean, the elevation, it's going to fuck you. It's going to fuck you. Speaking of elevation, I mean, Ch- Kamara Usman, Leon Edwards, they ain't fighting at elevation this time, baby. They ain't fighting at elevation this time. Excited to see how Leon Edwards fares coming out of the first round, which we I think we all forget. We all forget Leon Edwards took Kamara Usman's down, had his back, and was going for a rear naked choke at the end of that first round before Kamara Usman turned up the grappling and was able to gas Leon Edwards out up until he threw that, don't let him bully us, son, boom, boom, kick right to the face. God, what a beautiful moment in mixed martial arts. And her name is actually Keandra. My apologies for the mispronunciation. What is up, Andrew? Thank you so much for joining, brother. 
It's good to see you. You just hit the like button. Thank you very much. Everybody else in the live chat, please hit the like button as well as vote in the poll question. Let me know who you voted for as well. And if there's another name that I missed, like I said at the at the top of this stream, I said honorable mention to Lauren Murphy, who's also an Invicta alumni as well. Everybody hit that like. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Andrew, how's it going, buddy? Hope you had a good weekend. Hope you're having a good week. So even on tonight's card, uh, folks, the, the heaviest women on this card are 135 pounds. The rest are all 115. This one was a catch weight at 125, actually, though. So one of the women didn't make weight. Which, again, I mean, shh, harder for women to make weight, just given how our hormonal structures are much different. All right, Joe Martinez announcing the official winner, which I imagine McIntyre getting her first ever pro win in mixed martial arts. Kenja McIntyre, baby. Uh, it's a great week and weekend too. You get up to anything fun this week, Andrew? All right, Kendra just being interviewed in the center of the cage. We'll get these next two women up here, and we'll highlight them in just a moment's time. Keep the comments coming, ladies and gentlemen. It is a comment-driven live stream. As you know. Oh, dude, I love Kendra. She's awesome, man. She's like, my coaches are fucking amazing. All you girls who came out here to support me, you all are fucking amazing. She's so stoked, as she should be. Her first pro MMA win. That is awesome. That is awesome. I think the live weights were like 120, 121, so not that bad of a miss. No, Oh, that's not bad at all. Kendra's saying she not she didn't get a chance to show the full display of her weapons, but she said, hey, it's my first pro fight. I have time to get better. Shout out to her. Shout out to her and her first pro May win. Called it, says Gravedigger. One nothing for your prediction. Tonight we went to uh, an, an Echo Cruise. It's so beautiful. Wow, dude, that's awesome. How much longer are you uh, out east in Florida, dude? So this next bout is actually going to be fun, folks. Two undefeated ladies fighting next here on the card. Out of Colombia, we have Sayuri Cannon against the American Amanda Maciose? Maciose? I guess we'll find out how to pronounce her last name here in a moment, but uh, interesting last name. Um, Sayuri Cannon, 2 and 0 in her pro mix martial arts career. She also had one amateur fight, which she won. Both of her wins were against fighters who were 0 and 0. She fought in Empire MMA, MMA War, Columbia versus the World as well as Aztec Fight League 5. She won her first M pro MMA fight via first round knockout. She won her second one unanimous decision. She won her first amateur fight, first and only amateur fight via first round knockout as well. So she has power in the mitts at 115 pounds. However, she's coming in as the underdog plus 210. Her opponent, the American, Amanda, again, Masiochi? I, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. We'll we'll <laughs> we'll find out in a moment here. Um, she's minus two seventy favorite. She's one and zero oh in her pro MMA career. She was three and zero oh on the amateur scene. Amateur scene. She fought AFC and NFC on the amateur scene. She also has a few knockouts on her record. She won unanimous decision in her first MMA fight on the region or on 
the amateur scene. Her next two wins in AFC, she won KO, TKO in the second round, respectively, right at the beginning of the second round. And then in her first ever pro MMA fight, which was in LFA, LFA 147 to be exact, she won 20 seconds into the first round via punches. So both of these women actually have some power in the midst. I'm going with the American note, Amanda, as she she's fought in LFA and she has a little bit more experience, just a little bit. I'm going with the hard-hitting American, the favorite, Amanda Matsiotsi. Again, we'll, we'll figure out how to actually pronounce her name in just a moment. Locking it in. Give me your predictions in the live chat here, folks, as Amanda making your Invicta. Maciosi. Hey, I was pretty close, ladies and gentlemen. I was pretty close. Um, both of them making their Invicta debuts. I think Trevor Whitman goes 0-2 and two on Saturday. Who do you got for the main and co-main event? My official prediction for the main event is still up in the air. That's why I haven't finished my prediction video yet. Oh, it, it's it's hard because like my head says Zeusman, my heart says Leon. But because of the whole because of just watching how great of a first round Leon had and how he finished the fight, obviously. I mean, it's I think it's harder to count him out this time around than it was the first time around. So I don't have an official prediction on that one yet. I'm literally split right now. I have to just, I have to watch a couple more of their fights just again. And I have not even a couple more of their fights. I have to rewatch that fight again, particularly the first round. And I kind of want to watch the second and third round. Um, keep my eye on Usman again. Um, before I make my official prediction. I mean, to be honest, I'll probably end up picking Leon, but I, I don't want to lock in an official prediction for that for the co-main event. Oh, Fiziev, a hundred percent. I think he's going to rip apart the body and legs of Gaethje. I don't think Gaethje is going to want to wrestle with him. And I think if Gaethje does want to wrestle with him, I think everyone's overlooking that Fiziev has competed in combat sam Sambo. Like, I know it's not NCAA wrestling, but realistically, when the fuck has Gaethje used his wrestling in the UFC? Gaethje likes to go in the fire, likes to go in the pocket at and hit hard. Fiziev has an unbelievable chin and Fiziev is going to destroy his body with kicks. So Fiziev, a, a thousand percent. I'm, I'm betting the fucking house on it. Isha, what surprised me that ever Gabo Anderson looks like her mom, Mila? And by the way, I'm back. Over the weekend, my friend came over for a week. So they came to Naples and had lots of fun, like played bocce, then went to the courtside and and had a band. It's good. Dude, that's awesome. And you're escaping the Toronto cold up in Canada, hanging out in Florida for the winter. That is awesome. Gravedigger Jones is locking in Amanda. Shane's saying, hey, I was gone for a bit, but I am back. Shane, we highlighted the fighters. I am going for the American. I'm going for Amanda. Both of these women have knockout power. Both of these women have knocked out their opponents, both in the amateur scene and as a pro. Going with the American, though, Shane, as she has competed in LFA. I think Gaethje could win if he wrestled. If he just wrestled, I think so as well, but I don't think it's going to be easy for him because, look, I know he's a former NCAA wrestler, but he hasn't, he hasn't fought the wrestling game in the UFC, in the mixed martial arts game, for a long, long time. And Fiziev has competed in combat sambo. So the guy's no slouch when it comes to wrestling either. And you gotta you gotta think that he has been preparing for some of the the shots that Gaethje might put on him, which I mean shooting for takedowns. Shane's also picking the American going for Amanda. Gaethje wants to bang, though. He has to be the most entertaining fighter in the UFC. Absolutely. And I think if they're gonna stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I mean Fiziev has proven time and time again that if anyone wants to go toe to toe with him, the Muay Thai and kickboxing specialists can take a punch. And he's so good at attacking the liver and the body. And let's be honest, Gaethje has a high guard and a big torso. It's easy for him to get hit there. And he doesn't like those body shots. Gaethje would gas if he wrestles, especially with acclimated body shots, as you pointed out. I just think Fiziev's not getting enough, enough love, dude. Now, is Fiziev ever going to be a title holder at 155 i don't know is he going to compete for the title yeah i think he will 
I think he will a couple times in his career. And he, I mean, Gaethje's 34 with a ton of miles, a ton of wars under his belt in the UFC. Fiziev, I think, just turned 30 like last week or something like that. We went on the beach and they came back the night to play card games and watching sports and came back to have dinner and played mini golf. Dude, that sounds like an epic weekend, Andrew. Here till mid-April. So awesome. Going home right when uh, the weather turns. That's amazing. Uh, Going to go for the woman from the States where I was born. Wrestling and UFC aren't the same, and I'm a diehard wrestling fan. No, we're talking about real wrestling, City of Sunrise. None of that fake-ass WWE entertainment wrestling. We're talking real NCAA wrestling. Uh, what's up, Brian? What's going on? Hey, thank you so much for the email today and suggestion. It's marked on my calendar. We're going we're gonna to work on doing it, brother, because we haven't done an, an uh, Anthony Pettis league yet, and I'm very excited for that one. All right, round one, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Both of these women can hit hard as they both have knockouts on their careers. And already at the firefighter, um, and Amanda knocks down her opponent right off the bat. She just dropped Cannon. The first 20 seconds, both of them were just swinging and banging up against the cages. Cannon and a, a right and a left and a right. Look at the striking by Amanda. Look at the striking by Amanda. Crisp and clean. Look at her head movement there as well. How many shots has she already hit Cannon with? Oh my goodness. This is insane. This is insane. Spinning back fist attempt by Cannon here. Cannon is leaving her head a little bit open here. And she has been taking some shots. Going for the takedown is the American. A great takedown defense and stuffing of that by Cannon. Pan American wrestling champion from Colombia is Cannon. So that's where she gets her power from. And not pro wrestling like the WWE. We're talking competition Olympic wrestling. Locking it in. I'm a Leafs. Um, I'm a Leafs game, and it's in OT. Who are they facing again tonight, Andrew? Anyone remember Owen Hart? Doesn't she look exactly like Patty? I can't remember what she looks like off the top of my head. Three minutes and 20 seconds here. Both these women clinched up against the cage. What an exciting start to this fight here folks as both these women just started swinging and Amanda dropped Cannon 20 seconds into this fight yeah Gaethje said he doesn't wrestle because he would gasp but look at his camp if he focused on wrestling cardio he would do well but he wants to be known as entertaining I mean hasn't he won nine eight or nine UFC performance bonuses so I mean it has done him well as far as uh, setting him up for the future and getting some more money. So I understand it. Kind of like Michael Chandler, too. If Michael Chandler fought smarter, shoot, he would be amazing. He just likes to go to war and his wires cross, and that that's why the Gaethje and Chandler fight was so epic, because their wires just crossed and they just went full gladiator mode. <laughs> Which, what both of that element is what sunk them in the Charles Oliveira fight, because they both rocked Oliveira. Uh, do you focus on March Madness basketball or no? Because I know you talk about the Minnesota Gophers. I, I mean, basketball is just not my sport, but I do like watching March Madness. I think March Madness is a thousand times more entertaining than the NBA. I can't stand the NBA. I can't stand the NBA. Just the whole culture and, and everything. I mean, it, the 80s and 90s NBA was amazing, but today's NBA, it just pisses me off. The guys care more about their Instagram followers than winning basketball games. Kickboxing is allowed. Yes, rest in peace. Greco-Roman, Sambo, Pan-American, Olympic, NCAA, all that wrestling. Um, I prefer more than WWE. But yeah, City of Sunrise, I, I, I do think March Madness is one of the one of the better amateur sports competitions. Oh, outside low kick by Amanda as they're back on their feet here. Bleeding is cannon. Amanda. Oh, and now Amanda slipped as she was going for another leg kick and Cannon looked like she took advantage of that by sweeping. Amanda is bleeding, or sorry, uh, Cannon bleeding out of the mouth here. It looks like Amanda with a low knee. Oh, 
Looks like me, uh, Megan Anderson is getting blood splatted on her in the commentary booth. Owen Hart's a WWE wrestler who fell into the ring and died. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. Damn. You know, I heard about that. Oh, and a beautiful takedown. Disp oh, you know what? I'm not even going to say it was beautiful. It was a good takedown, but a beautiful transition from the Colombian back up on their feet here. 45 seconds left. Who said women Zemma main entertaining? This this fight has been entertaining as hell, and we're just in the first round here. And now Amanda bleeding from her nose as well. Spinning back fist attempt by the Colombian cannon. Getting out of the way is Amanda, and she goes for the body lock here. 25 seconds left. Oh, yeah. Real well, rest in peace to her. That is absolutely tragic. I, I do like that story sounds familiar. Again, I'm just I am not a WWE A E W pro wrestling guy at all. I'm very much a martial arts <laughs> and combat sports guy. I understand how it's entertainment, but and how some people like it. And, and I will never discredit the athletes. End of the first round, folks. I will never discredit the athletes who are in pro wrestling. Um, but it's it's just not my thing, even as a kid, and it will never be my thing, ever, because it ain't fighting. Such a tragic death, indeed. No, that's 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 horrible, and yeah, rest in peace. Peace out, Andrew. Thank you so much for liking the video and dropping by, brother. Both of these women are, are bloodied. Boy, it was a straight right that dropped Cannon, the Colombian, in the first round. I do think the Colombian has a little bit better technique just all around. But Amanda's damn strong and has power in her kicks and punches for sure. But she kind of swings a little crazy, kind of like Juliana Pena. Uh, the City of Sunrise has UCLA in your March Madness. Did you make a bracket, City of Sunrise? Uh, the Hart Brothers from Calgary. Oh, him. My apologies. My apologies. Uh, someone said her earlier in the chat. So again, I, this just shows like I just I just don't watch a lot of WWE. No disrespect, though. No disrespect at all coming my way, folks. Look at that. They're freaking Swiffer, Wet Jetting, the Blood and and extra sweat and and water in the ring here folks this might be fight of the night no shame indeed man this has been a this is a great first round here let me update the ticker on the bottom of the screen to reflect the second round as we get into it and again rest in peace let's have a right hook what a first round bro crazy and insane I think I just subbed the city of Sunrise. It's in Florida, right? California, if I'm not mistaken, city of Sunrise? That broken Swiffer wet jet. Oh, and a nice right hand by Amanda. Again, Amanda in the blue corner. Cannon in the red. Nice body kick by Amanda. Yes, I did. Now check if Indiana in March Madness. <laughs> so Amanda Masios 10-9 on all three judges scorecards makes sense since she got the knockdown right hand counter by Amanda oh and Amanda's just picking apart that lead left leg of Cannon and you know what you can see you can see some bruising on the upper left side of that left leg Oh, it's bad, man. Look at Kenyon's left leg there. And then that's going to make it harder for the traditional wrestler, who does have knockout power, but the traditional wrestler to shoot for those takedowns. It was WWF back then in 1999, and now WWE in 2002. I know, Andrew, you're a big wrestling guy as well. Um, you and City of Sunrise. Again, it's not for me, but I will never discredit the athletes. They put literally their lives on the line, and they are tremendous athletes. I'm moving to California after high school, living in the Los Angeles County. We were talking about that last live stream, buddy. 
going to university there, right? Two minutes and 58 seconds left here on the clock in the second round. And what a, what a fun fight, ladies and gentlemen. Kenyon, look at that spinning back fist now, but look at her left leg, man. Inside, outside, low, high. It is bruised up, but look at the face of Amanda. Amanda's taking some shots too. She's taking some shots too. Both of these women are bruised and battered, ladies and gentlemen. This is a fight. This is a fight. Shout out to everybody joining us live here on the channel. Like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring that bell for notifications so you never miss a live stream or an upload as there's going to be many uploads, many live streams this week as it is a jam-packed week in the world of mixed martial arts. Beautiful level change and takedown by Canyon. Beautiful takedown by Canyon. Oh, oh, cage grab. Cage grab by Amanda. Full on John's mom cage grab. Another cage grab by Amanda. Come on, ref. Two full-on cage grabs by Amanda there, and the ref just did not see them. Kenyon now. Despite the women being on her feet, full control here, body lock, and just laying down the smackdown on the side of Amanda's face. Still with the body lock here. Amanda, you can't grab the fucking cage, woman. Three times now she's grabbed the cage. And, oh, and avoiding the slam takedown was Amanda, and they separate. Hey, that was a good job by Amanda getting out of that one. But she did grab the cage three times, which I do not like. I'll try to stay away from LA because I can't imagine driving there. Oh, it's, the traffic's absolutely insane. I never drove there personally, but I visited LA when I was 13 or 14, I forget. And I even remember back then it was a nightmare. One minute left in the second round as my parents were driving. I blame Lindsey Vaughn and Mark Bergevin, Bergevin for PK's downfall. Man, PK Subban in his prime, I think was one of the one of the best defensemen in the league. He won the Norris one year, but he was he was like a candidate like four years running. Even his first year in Nashville, man. So I wouldn't say it was it was completely Bergevin. I mean, Lindsey Vaughn probably had a little bit more to do with it. Um, oh, and a nice. Push kick followed by a one-two by Canyon here. 30 seconds left in the second round. His first year in Nashville, they almost went, they went to the Stanley Cup finals, and he was a key member of that team. But yeah, his skating is insane. Oh, and Canyon here with the potential comeback. Some hard shots as Amanda starting to gas. And a nice right hand by Amanda. This fight is amazing, folks. Spinning back fist lands by Canyon, followed by straight left. Amanda starting to slow down here, not as explosive as she was in. The early part of this round, straight left, jab by Amanda, and that is it for the second round. What a fight, ladies and gentlemen. What a fight. But yeah, Professor uh, Chaos, P.K. Subban, was one of my favorite players. The fucking cage grabs. I'm so embarrassing, embarrassed of the Leafs game. Yeah, Andrew. Oh my God, look at the face of Amanda. Guys, didn't I say that Kenan hits hard? It's that wrestling, baby. Look at the face of Amanda. Now, Amanda, a little bit more fair skin, so yes, tend to show damage a little bit more, but man. What else is new, Andrew? Uh, NFL free agency has been crazy. I just heard that Aaron Rodgers wanted to play for the Jets. Didn't he get traded there? Or his rights got traded there or whatever? Yeah, You know me, buddy. I'm very much hockey, lacrosse, mixed martial arts. In his prime, he beat Crosby and Ovechkin back-to-back -back in the playoffs, playing 30 minutes a game versus them. Absolute savage, dude. He was so awesome. He could hit. His skating was on another level. No, I, I, it was truly an honor to watch PK, uh, PK play. All right. Round three, ladies and gentlemen, this absolute war in Victor 52. Let's get it on! And this is the second fight of the night. I can't believe one of these women haven't gone down yet. Going for the level change already is kind of... No way. You played juniors with PK? That's crazy. What, um, what team? Cage grab by friggin' Canyon there now, too. These women just grabbing the cage left, right, and center. What team did you play with them? That's crazy, foul one. That's amazing. So you know more than all of us, those Subban brothers can skate. 
I definitely think she she uh, probably won the second round, Shane. I think it's uh, I think it's tied going into the third, to be perfectly honest. Come on, do it for Georgia, USA, USA. Man, what a war from these ladies, indeed. I know. I think the nose of Amanda is is broken or something. But hey, Amanda's still employing those leg kicks, which is very smart. As if you see the left leg, the left lead leg of Canyon is completely bruised. Top of the outside and top of the inside. Ooh, a nice some, some nice knees by Amanda here. Oh, and Amanda going for a elbow out of the tie clinch. Front kick. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Amanda landed another kick on the left leg of Kenyon, and I think that she is severely damaged on that leg as she switched her stance here, and she's wobbling and was almost taken down from those leg kicks. <laughs> All right, Andrew, thank you so much for joining, brother. I appreciate you. If you want to watch these fights, Andrew, they are free on YouTube, Invicta FC. Nice right hand by Amanda. Amanda's starting to get the better of Kenyon halfway through this third and final round. The George Bell Titans. That is so awesome, Fowler. Yeah, that shit beautiful than a My Canadian brother. I love it. Oh, Canada, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Do you guys know back then? Was he on a crazy like level of skating back then? We were like, okay, this guy's going places. And the single leg takedown on one leg. Canyon has one functional leg and she got that single leg takedown with ease and she is now in side control on Amanda. Oh my goodness. Still technically side control here, but Amanda is on her right side. Amanda almost giving up her back here by the looks of it. This is a violent fight. And here comes some ground and pound side control here. Amanda giving up her back, back up to her feet as Amanda, but still with one hook in is Kenon just landing shots. Kenon has the body lock still. Tremendous fight. These women are 2 and 0, oh, 1 and 0 oh, oh, in professional MMA. And they're, I mean, it's not the most technical fight, don't get me wrong, but they're putting on a tremendous an entertaining performance here for us at Invicta 52. One minute and 20 seconds left in this third round. Um, and before we went to the Belleville Bulls, I knew he played in Bell. Did you play in Belleville as well, Foul One, in the, in the O? Dude, you played in the OHL? Because he got drafted from the Bulls, and I know his... Uh, I know Jordan Subban, his youngest brother, he played for the Belleville Bulls as well. He was a Vancouver Canucks draft pick. Cat, cage grab. Amanda grabbed the cage again. Oh, and a beautiful slam takedown by Kenon. What is insane about this, folks, is Kenon's left leg is completely gone. Like, look at it. And she's still employing the wrestling. This is real wrestling, baby. None of that WWE crap. I can't imagine fighting with one leg injured. Dude, especially when it's your lead left leg. That is amazing. That is tremendous. My YouTube feed just froze here. Did everyone else's feed just freeze too? Okay, we're back. We're back. 25 seconds left in this third and final round. Man, the beginning of the round, I thought it was Amanda winning, but pure domination here by Kanon late in the round. Amanda, don't grab that cage. <laughs> 10 seconds left. Nah, he sucked. He started playing late, like around 10 or 11. Wow. Well, that even shows how, how crazy he actually is starting that much later and becoming that good of a skater later in his career. That is the end of this fight, folks. Beautiful display of mixed martial arts. Beautiful display of violence. Both of these women bruised, battered, and bloodied. Nope, but I played for the Oakville Rangers. It was on the second team for St. Mike's Majors. Uh, that's awesome. 
That is awesome. Never played a game in the O. That's okay. That's okay, dude. That is so sick. You played for the Oakville Rangers, though. Dude, foul one. You're a hell of a hockey player, buddy. I respect that. Jeez. I'm I'm like I'm like swooning like a fan here. I love junior hockey. Junior A, junior B, and obviously major junior. The WHL will always be like my favorite league out of the, of the out of the Canadian hockey league just because I grew up watching Bougard, um, Bufflin, Ham Hughes play for the Prince George Cougars. And then I also watched the Prince, Prince George Spruce Kings of the BCHL as well. I miss Zidane O'Chara. I was too young to watch him play for the Cougars, but I just love the grit that the WHL had. The OHL is a good hybrid of like grit and skill um, compared to the Quebec League, which is just a joke because guys putting up 120 points don't even get drafted in the first round because <laughs> scouts know that they can't even hang uh, with anybody in the AHL. Yeah, we're like 15 seconds ahead of my stream, but now I think it's the same. Um, One sec, folks. Oh, phone was ringing. Just wanted to make sure it uh, wasn't an emergency here, but I'll check on it in a sec as we are listening in for the official decision. Denver's a nice city, but cold. I hear it's beautiful, but yeah, cold. No, I don't, unfortunately. Like I said, buddy, lacrosse, hockey, mixed martial arts. <laughs> So Gino Char would have probably done well if he chose MMA as a career. Hell yeah. So, shit, same with Bugard. Rest in peace. Senuri so Kanon wins, folks. What a response in that third and final round. She improves her mixed martial arts, pro mixed martial arts career to 3-0 and in that absolute war. Mm -mm 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 -mm. There, I'm just uh, texting my buddy here. Kenon in the center of the ring here, her translator with her. Boom, 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 boom. Who won? Cannon won? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Amanda won the first round. Cannon, the underdog at plus 210 out of Columbia, wins the second and third round to give her the unanimous decision. Credit where credit is due. I mean, we all lost that one in the prediction. I think well, almost everyone. Oh, uh, wait, foul one. You chose the Columbian. Am I, if I'm not mistaken, I'm scrolling up here. Who picked the Colombian to win? Somebody in the chat. There was one person in the chat who picked Cannon to win this. The rest of us went with the hard-hitting American. And hey, great, great fight, man. Honestly. She's just saying thank you to her family. Thanks for everyone here. Thanks to the crowd. Friends and families, all the Latinos and, and Colombians supporting me as well. Thank you to everybody. What a great fight. Yeah, that I mean that that should get fight of the night, folks. I mean, assuming we don't see another war like that, especially for the belt, my goodness, what a war that was. All right, we will highlight the next two fighters here in just a moment, folks. Reminder, if you haven't voted in the poll question yet, please do so. Let me know who you voted for as well. Let me know if there's a, if there's a woman who I missed in the poll question as there's been a ton of great fighters who've come out of Invicta. I said honorable mention to a Lauren Murphy. I commented that right at the beginning of the stream who's also an Invicta alumni. We have the next two fighters here. We'll update the graphic here on the screen. 
Do, 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 do. And again, appreciate every single one of you joining. You all are amazing. Like and subscribe again if you haven't already. We have a ton of fight companions this week. Obviously doing Invicto right now. We also have one championship, KSW and BKFC on Friday. That's right. Back to back to back, ladies and gentlemen. Walking out right now is Natasha Kuzi Kuziutina. Out of Russia, looks like she is a judo practitioner walking out in her gi. One and owner pro MMA career. She is the heavy underdog, plus 425. Training out of Florida, she's 33 years of age. She fought in game-bred boxing where she won via armbar, very judo-esque, in the first round uh, at the end of 2022 against another fighter who was uh, making her pro MMA debut as well. Damn, she looks like she's in tremendous shape there. Holy crap, with the six-pack and all, fighting her opponent and making her Invicta FC debut is Natasha Kuzi. Kuziutina. Her opponent, Fatima uh, Kleine? Klein? Fatima Klein, the American huge favorite. My goodness, 22 years of age. She's currently riding a four fight win streak, including amateur 3 and 0 in pro mixed martial arts. 3 and 0 in Invicta who is a decorated grappler as well. As you can see here, a ton of grappling, a ton of grappling matches. And she was 1-0 and o on the amateur scene as a pro mixed martial artist. She last fought in Invicta early in 2022. She's had two grappling matches since... Oh, sorry, she, she last fought in Invicta, I should say, Back in January, so just a just a few months ago, where she won a unanimous decision, improving her record to two and zero, where she fought a four and a one opponent. Before then, she fought a two and zero opponent in Invicta, winning in the third round, early in the third round via ground and pound. So a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner up against a judo practitioner here in this next fight let me know who you are picking for your predictions in this one looking forward to seeing fatima klein isn't klein fighting a Ju olympic judoko champ i think the russian had a bronze it looks like she is. looks like she is looks like she is so we got Judoko against Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu here. 22 years old is Fatima Klein. 33 years old is Kuziotina. Closing odds, plus 400 for Kuziotina, minus 550 for the American. That's a Meldonium Physique. Shane says, I'm picking Klein. Yeah, I know. I know we got burned for not picking the underdog last time, but uh, I got to go with the Brazilian jiu-jitsu specialist on this one. I'm going with the American again. Come on, favorite. Don't let me down for the second time in a row. I'm locking it in. Natalia Cruz Udina in the blue corner. Fatima Klein, 3 0 again, pro mixed martial arts in the red corner. Fatima, that's a Persian name. I wonder if she's of Persian descent at all. If Klein wins this fight, she has to be signed to the UFC. She's that good, eh? I mean, it looks like, I mean, we, we just went over the record. The opponents she's fought were like, they weren't bad. Now she didn't fight anyone like crazy, like a seven and zero person or anything like that. But she fought decent opponents. It's not like she just fought other women making their pro debut. She fought women who four and zero, four and one. All right, round one, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it all. 
Meldonium is what Islam got busted for, the same drug every Russian gets banned from the Olympics for. Shout out the movie Icarus, if you guys haven't seen it. One of the best documentaries, sport documentaries ever. That was crazy, the whole Sochi Olympics. BGJ Prodigy is Klein. She already takes the back of her opponent here. Four minutes and 16 seconds on the clock here in the first round. Back up against the cage is Natasha Kuzutina. Kuzutina back still in the cage. They separate here. Klein back to the center of the ring. Kuzutina still on the back foot here. Klein with some feints here through straight left jab doesn't land. They're still separated here. Three minutes and 32 seconds left. Klein looking for that entry, you can tell, and she's throwing fakes to do so. Mel Dion or the Mel Donium, is it that a um is it an anabolic? Oh, and a beautiful roll there by Klein. And again, the judoko used to grappling. A good good job by the Russian for getting back on her feet. I'm not a <laughs> steroid expert, clearly. <laughs> Foul one. Is it a anabolic or is it more of like a like EPO? Kuzatina, as the broadcast says, training at American top team to try to get her striking game or to work on her striking game and beautiful judo throw. Beautiful judo throw. Hip toss to be exact by Kuzatina. Klein. Hooking the right leg of Kuzatina here. As she's on her back, but Kuzatina has her left arm around the neck of Klein. Kuzatina doing a good job of holding that neck and that posture to try to avoid... and. And there we go. Klein gets out of it. And that was inevitable in my mind, ladies and gentlemen. Klein gets out of it and gets to the back of her opponent. Klein, full back take here with the hooks in. Kuzadina trying to trap the hands of Klein right now, but Klein has both the hooks in and full back take one minute and 22 seconds left in the first round I think it's a growth stimulant but I am not a doctor okay okay still with the back here but not double hooks just one hook but Klein looking for the rear naked choke here despite having both the hooks in the Bulldog throw was a huge mistake. You never see that throw in men's MMA. Judo instinct. 44 seconds left. Both of these fighters back on their feet. Good job by the Russian for getting out of that back take. Now the Russian going for the single leg. And she gets it, but doesn't complete it as Klein gets right back up to her feet. Klein with a good job of even just on her feet, getting out of that hook, kind of going right underneath it, and getting that right arm around uh, Kuzitina. Even Maria Sharapova was busted for it, uh, said it was a doctor prescription for low iron or something like that. Dude, the, the entire fucking 
NHL or sorry, not NHL, the entire Russian hockey team too. Um, even at the, I believe even at like the world juniors of the U18, the Russian junior players were, were given it as well. And they were just like, exactly. We were just given it as part of like the athletics were saying, no, this is your, you know, whatever supplement. Um, again, guys, if you haven't already watched the documentary, and that's the end of the first round, by the way, if you haven't already watched the documentary Icarus, it's crazy. It's absolutely insane what happened in that Olympics. The Sochi Olympics in particular. Yeah, there were so many athletes who like didn't even know they were doping, but state-sponsored doping, baby. Russia wanted to get all the medals that year. But uh, yeah, again, one of the best documentaries ever. It is on Netflix, both American Netflix and Canadian. Russia has a history of the secret juice. Yeah, I mean, Paulo Costa, he's releasing his own secret juice brand. I'm sure he's going to, you know, sign a deal with Russia. All right, round two. Let's get it all! <laughs> yeah, that's what Islam took for his heart surgery. Mm. <laughs> Love Bobby. Oh, beautiful job by Fatima Klein grabbing the right leg of Kuzitina and punching her right in the face with the right hand. So two judges have the first round for Klein, one for Kuzatina. Yeah, I love Bobby Green in that in his last press conference, just <laughs> going ham on Islam and the Dagestanis for uh, their supplements. I love Bobby Green. I mean, getting towards the end part of his career, but I, I freaking love Bobby Green. His interview with Joe Rogan, as crazy as it was, was one of my favorite Joe Rogan episodes of all time. Throwing that front, front kick again did Klein. Kuzatina tried to catch and go for the takedown, but Klein did not allow her to do so. Three minutes and 43 seconds left in the second round. Klein baited her with that kick again, hoping that Kuzatina would grab it. She did, and she used it to quickly grab the back and go for a takedown of her own. Modified half guard. Actually, she's full on half guard right now, I should say, by Klein. Both of them flattened out here. Three minutes and 20 seconds left in the second round. Dude, Klein, 22 years old, and she looks damn good for a 22-year-old. If she if she gets a finish in this fight, I could see her probably going on content next season in Contender Series starting in a few months. I know the chat was saying that sign her right to the UFC after that. I mean, hey, easier for women to to get into the UFC just because of the divisions not being as deep, but uh, just because she's, what, yeah, 3-0, and and if she wins this one, she'll be 4-0. I could probably see them go in Contender Series row just, just because, like, why not? Yes, Klein for Dana White Contender Series is a great idea. If she had more fights under her belt, then sure, sign her to the UFC. But generally, we see women in Invicta who are like higher in the rankings get just straight up signed or like champions. But uh, not enough women in Contender Series. And again, I get it. Women's MMA is not everyone's cup of tea and it's not as high level. Like, again, I'll, I'll be the first one to admit that. However... You know, it would be nice to see someone of her level anyways get that call. Half guard for Klein still. Kusnadina just really trying to hold that neck down. Klein, it's not like she's not doing anything. She's throwing elbows, throwing shots here. Whenever Kusnadina moves, Klein is on her as Kusnadina gives up her back here. Klein going for the choke and Klein gets it. Body triangle is secured. Body triangle is secured here. Going for the rear naked choke. Chris Nadina rolling here. Klein on her back. Doesn't have a lot of time to work here in the second round. One minute left. 
Kuzniatina looking to get back up to her feet, but a good job by Klein using the fence here. Back up against the fence, has the body triangle back. Take on Kuzniatina still. Dude, Klein's smart here. She took one of the hooks out so she could use the mat as leverage to pull that neck, neck up. It didn't work, but that was that's some high-level grappling. 35 seconds left. Pure domination in this round by Klein. 30 seconds left. Good ground and pound by Klein here on the back. I mean, look at the pressure that she's putting on. An easy back take again with the, the hooks. Yeah, and there we go. I mean, the broadcast said it too. Effortlessly flows from position to position. Kusadia's physique is unbelievable. Yeah, dude, she she's jacked. Washboard abs. And that's the end of the second round. I mean, I got Klein winning. I mean, she won the first round. Judges, one judge didn't have her winning that round, but whatever. She definitely won that second round, though. I don't think even that judge who scored the first round for the Russian was going to score that second round for Kusnadina again. Fatima Klein, you got to imagine she's going to just pounce on her this time and try to go for that rear naked. Not that she wasn't going for it in that second round, but she was very much flowing, letting. Kusnadina dictate where she was going to attack her next, right? Where Fat Fatima was going to attack her next. Again, vote in the poll question, folks, if you haven't already. Let me know who you voted for. Let me know if I missed anyone. Like I said, honorable mention to Lauren Murphy. I personally think Cyborg's the most successful woman to come out of Invicta. Let me know who you voted for. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that bell for notifications so you never miss a live stream. Third and final round. Let's get it all. Outside low kick by Klein. They won't put Klein into the Dana White Contender Series. They will fast track her. 22-year-old American. Yeah, but she's not as... I mean... She's no Blanchfield from what I've seen yet. Can that same judge scored it for Kusnadina? That's interesting. Um, look, Fallon, they, they, they perfectly might do that. Don't get me wrong. I would rather see her in contender series because she hasn't really showed me. I mean, her striking is okay, but like, her opponent, like, let's be honest, the Russian striking here <laughs> ain't that good. I would like to see her go go up against another another girl, another prospect, five and zero, oh, you know, six, you know, some someone in that area who had maybe has a little bit more striking and see uh see how she fares. So if she doesn't finish her opponent, I don't think the UFC comes calling at all. Whether it's Dana White Contender Series or the UFC, I think she'll need one more finish. And one more dominant performance in Invicta first. No, it was all three for Klein in the second in the second round. Oh, was it? I thought one judge. Oh, okay. Sorry, they must have been uh, just because that one judge scored it in the first that it was off. So my apologies. Three minutes and sixteen seconds left in the third. Put it this way, if Klein was 145, 100% foul one should be in the UFC because they need to keep loading up that division because there's not a lot of depth in that division at all. Because it's 115, it's already a deeper women's division in the UFC right now. But again, I'm, I'm good either way. I think it'd just be fun to see her on a contender series. But I'm selfish. I fucking love Contender Series. It's one of my favorite shows slash... Do we just call it a league of its own? Sure, we'll call it a league of its own. <laughs> Two minutes and 22 seconds left in this third round. 
back up to their feet here. Going for that single leg was Kusnatina, and she just talk about a swing and a miss or a shoot and a miss, ladies and gentlemen. Klein gets right on her back here. Side control as Kusnatina was trying to single out one of the arms of Klein in defense, but is unsuccessful. Back take by Klein here. Back up to their feet, but Klein still has a back. Oh, spinning back fist. I mean, a little muffin back fist, but still on the exit by Kusnadina. Moving forward, 1-2. Nice 1-2. That one seemed to stun the Russian there. And Klein might go with the finish here. That left hand punishing Kusnadina over and over again. It was the right hand that stunned her, though, originally. Klein, one minute and 15 seconds left in this third and final round. And Klein in the top position. Klein, modified half guard side control. Laying down the ground and pound is Klein. Back up to her feet is Klein. Klein pushes the legs of Kustadina to the side as she enters into her guard and lands some ground and pound. Back up to her in her feet. Klein just punishing Kustadina right now. Back up to her feet is the Russian. But Klein, absolute domination in this round. Kusadina is shooting from miles away. This is low-level stuff from her. Yeah, she is, she is definitely a 1-0 fighter. And now going for the rear naked choke is Klein. She's got one arm under the... She's got her left arm under the chin, but her right arm is being singled out by Kusnadina, and there's 15 seconds left in this fight. They should just get rid of the women's 145. Yeah, and the UFC 100%, because it's, it's honestly, it's way deeper in the PFL. It's so deep in the PFL that women are moving, I mean, not so deep, but deep enough in the PFL that, you know, women are moving up to 155. <laughs> and that is it for the third round. I'm fine going like this. <laughs> Dominant performance by the American Fatima Klein. Yeah, not impressed with the Russian judoko fighter. She had an okay first round, but got beat up in that second and third round for sure. Got I should say ragdolled in the second round and a little bit of both in that third round. She took some hard shots and was just, you know, utterly dominated by the young American. Deeper than Bellator, too. Basically, just nines bulk into 145 is the entire division. <laughs> yeah, well, that judo black belt didn't help you up against the Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. Now did it. Oh, basically just Nunes. But yes. I thought you were talking about uh, PFL for a second, but yes. There is... Only Nunes at 145. Like, there is nobody else. Like, that's what's crazy about that division. There is nobody else. Nobody. And, I mean, the, the division is basically gone. Like, when, when was when was the last time we saw a 145 women's fight in the UFC? I can't. I couldn't even tell you off the top of my head. Nunes at 135 is an absolute killer, though, and I love her in that division. Hell yeah, Klein. She's good. Now, again, this is the reason why I don't think the UFC is going to sign her right away. It's just because, like, she destroyed her opponent there, but she didn't finish her. And let's be honest, <laughs> this Kustadina chick didn't really pose much of a threat. I'm one and two in this card, says Gravedigger Jones. I am two and one. Same with Shane. All right, Joe Martinez announcing the official decision, and it is going to be Fatima Klein. Aldana will end Nunez. I'm excited for that one. I do like Aldana. 
Fatima Klein improves her mixed martial arts record to four and zero. Oh. Hey, great performance by her, but again, coming off that war we saw against uh, Cannon and Masiosi, I mean, tsh, hard to top that. Hard to top that. All right. Next, we have Kaylee Cutler against Myra Cantularia. And these are the heaviest women on this card. They are 135ers, and we'll update the ticker on the bottom of the screen and the graphic on the screen here in just a actually right now let's do it the honey badger kaylee cutler the american versus myra Cantuaria, the brazilian and the brazilian is the pretty big favorite here minus 350 despite being on a two fight losing streak we will update or sorry we will highlight both these fighters in one moment i'm just going to update the ticker on the bottom of the screen undefeated fatima klein Continuing, continuing to rise up the rankings in the Invicta Strawweight division and crediting her coaches for helping her get better with every single fight. She said that there's still much to learn. But yes, bantamweights next here, folks. 135ers, the only bantamweights on this card. <laughs> no one messes with the honey badger. <laughs> I know who Gravedigger Jones is is uh, picking already, folks. <laughs> I know who Gravedigger Jones is picking already. <laughs> when you don't know what's Grave, Gravedigger Jones' rule, always go for the Brazilian. <laughs> All right. As the fighters are about to make their walk out here, let's highlight and run down these fighters. The honey badger, Kaylee Cutler. Out of Michigan, she is the underdog plus 270. She is 7-6 and six in her pro MMA career. She is 0-1 in LFA, 1-2 and two in King of the Cage. She lost in BKFC in her last fight back in 2020. Her last fight was in 2020, and it was in BKFC where she lost via second round TKO. She's fought in WXC. She's fought in Vegas Night. LFA, reality fighting. She did get a win in RFA against Mariah Prisha. Mariah Prisha was 5-1 and one at the time. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. She's fought in Lion Fight with Muay Thai. So she is very much a stand-up fighter. She started off her pro MMA career going 3-0, and oh, then lost 2-1-1, one, one, lost 2-1, lost 2-1, and then lost 2 more. Um, and her last fight, like I said, lost in BKFC. She did have a good decorated amateur career, though, as she went seven and one, sorry, eight and one in her amateur career, continued that win streak into the pros. But again, that was back in 2014, and her last fight was BKFC back in 2020, making her Invicta debut is the Honey Badger Kaylee Cutler. Again, her opponent, Myra Cantuaria, out of Brazil. Nine and five is Myra. She's 34 years old. Like I said, she is the favorite. Minus 350. She's on two fight losing streak right now, but she is three and two in her last five fights. Uh, training on a Brazilian top team. She's zero and one in LFA, three and one in standout fighting tournament, and one one and one in jungle fight. By the way, jungle fight's a fun promotion, guys. Jungle fight's a fun promotion. Um, but she was on a two, four, six fight win streak before suffering two losses in a row. She's fought in Pancrase, Chuto Brazil as well as Jungle Fights, ACC as well in her first fight, which was, funny enough, a no contest. But she did win her two fights after that. 
She won two, lost two, win, lost, went on that six fight win streak, and then lost her last two fights. One in LFA, one in SFT. Making both of them making their Invicta debuts here tonight at 135. The only Bantam weights on the card. Hey, Michigan's a tough state. Good hockey state. Absolutely. BKFC, yep. Fight's been fun so far, bro. Dude, that second fight in particular, that one was an absolute war. Wait, who fought in BKFC? Uh, the Honey Badger. And she lost via TKO in the second round in BKFC. I got whoever fought in BKFC. You got the Honey Badger locking it in. She lost in BKFC, though. You still got to be tough as nails to fight in BKFC. God respect anyone who will fight in BKFC, though. That is badass, hence her name, the Honey Badger. Locking it in for foul one. Who do you got, Gravedigger? Who do you got, Shane? I'm going with the Brazilian. I got to follow Gravedigger Jones' rule here. She looks like she's a mean fighting machine in the blue corner. Fighting in jungle fights as well. I'm going with Myra Cantuiara, locking it in. Shane's picking Myra as well. Shane and I picked the same fighters this entire fight. How's BKSC as a product? Do you guys see it? Oh, dude, it's growing like crazy. They just signed Luke Rockhold. He's fighting Mike Perry. They signed um, Eddie Alvarez. He's fighting Chad Mendes. It's, I, I love BKFC. I absolutely love it. And it's it's been growing every single year. Dude, they're making so much money now, sponsorship deals, and with even their small pay-per-views um, that they're able to bring in some really big talent. Now, they, they weren't able to bring in Francis Ngannou because he was asking too much money, but I, I, I think it's growing at a crazy rate right now, and more and more states are sanctioning it, which is awesome. Only California won't allow it, which, like, that's no surprise. Myra, I was responding for the foul one, locking it in. If you pick the underdog next time, I'll pick Cutler. No, it's all good, Shane. It's all good. I'm just, I was just, I was just thinking out loud. All right, round one, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it all. It's a bit brutal for you, but I love it. Oh, what a nice double left or straight left jab followed by a left hook by the Brazilian. Just for head to head excitement. All right, I'll update the ticker on the bottom of the screen to reflect the round. BKFC used to be a little bit brutal for me, but I don't I don't know why I don't know why I've grown to just see the beauty in it these days. But I totally understand it. There's a lot of blood. Moving forward, here's the Brazilian just throwing hooks at her opponent. 355 left on the clock here in the first round. Yeah, I would imagine it being pretty brutal with all the blood and cuts. It's brutal with the blood and cuts because of the no gloves, right? But I feel like fighters don't take, quote-unquote, as much damage from the hits because they get knocked out quicker or they get cut so bad quick that the refs have to end it, unlike taking volume strikes to the brain, right? But again, it is it is brutal. <laughs> Hell yeah, Shane. Locked it in. Oh, and a nice kick after the clinch by Myra. Center of the ring right now. Three minutes left. Straight right jab by Myra. Myra's boxing looks pretty good. Good head movement. Doesn't have the timing down yet. Oh, an easy takedown by Myra. It almost looked like the honey badger like allowed that. She now is looking for an arm bar. And the honey badger on her back, Myra inviting her back to her feet. A little bit of blood coming out of the nose of the honey badger here out of Michigan. Straight right jab by Myra. Don't be horrible. What's going on, brother? It's been a while. I haven't seen your new setup yet, but I like the Dawn Cherry. I'm glad also your channel is getting so popular. I appreciate it, brother. I haven't seen you in a while. I hope all is well. Agreed, Isha. That's why CTE in boxing is worse because of the big gloves. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
It's just volume strikes, right? Whereas BKFC, like once you get pinged with the knucks to the to that sweet spot, they they go down. And and you know what another great thing about BKFC is, guys, is the officials aren't afraid to stop the fights as soon as they're like, okay, your your face is too mangled, that cut is too bad, or you've got knocked down twice now, we're done, you know. Back take by Myra right now. Back take by Myra. She's going for the rear naked choke. This could be it. Doesn't even have the body triangle in. It's not under the hook yet. Cutler fighting the hands. Cutler looking to advance position. Cutler looking to roll, and she does as Cutler now is in the Brazilian's guard in the top position. The Brazilian, they're looking for that reverse arm triangle here. She has the arm under the neck here. She's on the side of Cutler right now. Looking for that arm triangle. One minute left in the first round. I don't think she's going to get it. I don't think the arm's going to be... I don't think she's going to get enough leverage for that arm to get under the neck and she lets it go. Nice elbow by Cutler here as she's escaped any threat of a submission. She's in the full guard and now she's just laying down some ground and pound. Looking for an arm bar now is the Brazilian. Man, the Brazilian's got some good jujitsu as well. And a good guard pass by the Honey Badger. Looking to get look, looking to go for a back take was Cutler, but good rolling herself was the Brazilian. Cutler's on top, laying down some elbows here. 20 seconds left in this first round. A good reversal by Cutler who was getting beat up pretty bad in the first part of this first round leg lock attempt by the Brazilian in the final five seconds of this first round end of the first round not bad not bad of a scrap I thought just at first Cutler was way out of her league but no she she did good reversing out of that back take and rear naked choke attempt and actually was able to get some ground and pound at the end of that first round. Your channel is going to continue to exp exponentially grow. Well, I appreciate the kind words and it's great to see you here, buddy. Uh, yes. Agreed with boxing being the worst for CTE. We will see when we have the MMA data though, since it is a bit new. Yeah. And it's hard to judge like the old UFC data just because it was, it was way more savage um, all the guys and gal. I just there were no gals at that point, but all the guys were like were like on roids, so <laughs> they were just hitting a lot harder. Um, I still think just because less shots to the head and more kicks to the body, because I know there's body shots in boxing, but like let's be honest, like more there are usually more shots to the head in a boxing match. Um, with the and and you know what is also changing mixed martial arts these days, a lot of calf kicks right? A lot of calf kicks, which is something we didn't even see in the earlier forms of mixed martial arts. So just, just I test based on the eye test alone. I still have to think that like boxing is always going to be more dangerous for the brain, but I mean, any combat sport is pretty savage. All right. Round two, ladies and gentlemen, Myra Let's get it all. 10 all around on the judges scorecards as she's continuing to outbox uh, Callie Cutler here in the first 30 seconds of the second round. I love the Don Cherry too, even though we're not supposed to know. <laughs> or we're not supposed to, you know. No, fuck that, man. Don Cherry is an absolute legend, dude. Dude, Don Cherry got canceled, bro. Don Cherry got canceled. And look, he was getting pretty senile anyways. I remember even back in 2011, we had a drinking game where when Don Cherry said something a little off base or that didn't make sense, we had to take a shot during the Stanley Cup playoffs. But uh, no, he he grew the game in, in such a crazy way. And he loved the sport. And I don't even think what he said was, com was completely offside. I think he just was... I think he just is a little old and senile and wasn't able to put the sentence together like he wanted to. And uh, the social justice warriors came after him. Ron McClain didn't have his back. And uh, yeah, he got canceled. He has a podcast now, though, that his uh, grandson produces. And it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Beautiful back take and 
takedown by Myra. She has the back of Cutler again. Three minutes and 19 seconds left in the second round. Cutler desperately trying to get back up to her feet but just the pressure on her back here from the Brazilian. I listened to that song a few days ago, Isha. She was good. Yeah, man, from the earth. They just had, they just played a show back in Nanaimo. Uh, we got a few more videos of them in our one take session series coming out. Back take again by Myra here. She has the hooks in. She's going for the rear naked choke. Good job of fighting the hands yet again by Cutler. Two minutes and 52 seconds. Oh, and the arm is under the neck here, but does she have enough leverage to finish the choke? And that's the tap. It is all over. It is all over. The Brazilian takes this one. The honey badger is tough as nails, but you could just see that the Brazilian was way better as far as the technique in all areas. The boxing, the wrestling, the jujitsu. And she takes this one rear naked choke in the second round. The first finish on this card. He hasn't been on for a while, I believe five years now. Yeah, better to Google it. I don't think what he said was offside, but was taken out of context. But after that, he kind of became a right wing hero. Yeah, that honestly, that's the best way to describe it. That That is the best way to describe it. Taken out of context because, again, like I said... <laughs> He's a little old and senile and he just didn't he did he didn't put the proper sentence together. But even then it like it wasn't that bad, but a lot of people wanted him canceled anyways just because of him making fun of the Swedes back in the day and, and things like that. But uh no, he he's an absolute legend. This is my favorite favorite bobblehead that I own. I will switch up some of the bobbleheads every now and then. I have a Derek Lewis one that I haven't even opened from the box yet because it's just like, oh my god, it's so amazing. I have a Kirill Kaprizov a Star Wars one that I think you guys have seen before. I have a Rock 101 Bro Jake bobblehead. I have a Macklemore in a Seattle Mariners jersey. Uh, what else do I have? I have Pavel Bure in Florida Panthers uh, jersey. And I have Todd Bertuzzi. Todd Bertuzzi, I think there was way more controversy around Todd Bertuzzi than there was a Don Cherry. And Todd Bertuzzi, I mean, he still played in the National Hockey League after trying to kill Steve Moore on the ice. Good and even 2-2 two, two win. Gravedigger Jones, always go for the Brazilian. Oh, look at that. Dancing there is the Brazilian. <laughs> the Brazilian just doing this. I love it. She's got some swag, man. She's got some swag. All right, official decisions coming up here in a sec. And he tried to kill Brit. Wait, was he the one who tried to kill Brashear? Oh, yeah. Dude. I remember that. Dude, and how about Tyler Bertuzzi, his nephew, who's just not not as much of a shithead, but he's a little shithead too. It's hilarious. I think though Boston picking up uh, Tyler Bertuzzi was a great pick for them, especially since uh, Felino and Taylor Hall are going to be out for the playoffs. All right, Joe Martinez given the official announcement of the winner here tonight. Oh, and that's cool. Myra with her uh, with her team, they all put up their hands together. That's pretty awesome. Good display of respect, though, to Myra and the, the Honey Badger here and Cutler shaking the hands of the whole team here. Myra being interviewed here in the center of the ring. Yeah, what, uh, what bobblehead should I... Should I put out next year? I just love my, I love supporting the CFL and the BC Lions and Solomon Elamimim. He was one of my favorite uh, BC Lions, and it was cool to get this uh, this bobblehead. Yeah, what a fucking piece of shit! And you know he was kicked out of ASU um, for just breaking team rules i think and he was very vocal of how like he was there to party more than to play hockey so he was already given a second chance now playing at maryhurst yeah what, what a dick uh 
uh, his son, again, the son was already kicked out of one university ho hockey program. Um, there was security footage of him um, pushing someone's wheelchair, not someone in the wheelchair, but someone who was like either sitting down at a different part of the club or in the bathroom. We, we don't know, but uh, him and two other drunk idiots pushing the wheelchair down these stairs, which obviously cannot be retrieved by the person who can't access the stairs and yeah the social media world just torched him and danny breer came out and gave a gave a statement about it and he's kind of dry statement we were disappointed blah blah blah, blah. but uh yeah yeah i can i was i'll find the link the ncaa should ban his ass i mean yeah the kid's gotten two second chances now he gave a lawyer statement. No, exactly. It wasn't an apology or or a real statement. Uh, let me find it quick. It's it's all around Twitter right now. Um, blah, 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 blah. oh man, Grave Digger Jones. By the way, I have seen the uh, Roy Jones Juniors, Anthony Pettis, Aldo's fighting Jeremy Stevens, Belfour's fighting Souza. That's a crazy card, eh? Great game bread boxing. We talked about it a few weeks ago, but yeah, we'll get into it more in the next uh, couple weeks here. It's coming up, eh? Uh, bah, 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 bah. I just want to get this. Here it is. 28 million views. Oh, this kid's getting torched, man. Oh, and here we go. One of the more popular fighters in Invicta out of Ireland, Shannon or Shauna Bannon is fighting next year. She makes her fight. Oh, I love her mouthpiece, man. The, the tri-colored mouthpiece representing Ireland. I'm pretty sure the last Invicta event we did, uh, Bannon was on the card as well. Mama B, that's a funny nickname. Um, all right, we will highlight the next two fighters in just a moment. Here, just gonna update the ticker on the bottom of the screen. It's 2 a.m. in Ireland. Yeah, I know a bunch of my Irish friends are watching. <laughs> two Irish fighters here on the card here tonight. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. For Ireland. Uh, it's funny to see the subtitles they give to her language. It's gibberish because it treats her Brazilian like English. Oh, that's what people were saying about uh, KSW and um, oh, that uh, that kickboxing promotion that we did last weekend. People were laughing so hard at the subtitles. Same with one championship. Whenever they were speaking Thai and the YouTube subtitles would come up. <laughs> All right. Finland versus Ireland here, baby. Shauna Bannon is Gravedigger Jones luck. The apology was almost more shocking than the video, dude. It And the school statement on it, too, was a joke. The school ended their statement saying, we do want to encourage everybody to realize that kids, sh that we that, that we do give kids a second chance. I'm like, bro, this was his second chance. Anyways, yeah, it it sucks. I stand with the, I stand with, with the girl who that wheelchair belonged to, and I, I stand with everyone shitting on him. And yeah. And I mean, Danny Breer, he was uh, being interviewed that day for a piece by a, a pretty well-respected hockey writer in Minnesota for the athletic named Michael Russo. And oh my God, did Michael Russo's timeline get absolutely pummeled because earlier that day, like literally like 20 minutes before the video dropped, he was like, shoot me some questions for Danny Breer. And everyone's like, ask him why his son's a piece of shit. <laughs> Shane's going for Bannon as well. All right, both these fighters are being announced. We'll do a quick, quick rundown of them. Mina Grusander out of Finland. She's six and four in her pro MMA career. She is two and three in her last five fights. 
She's one and two in Invicta, three and zero oh in Fight Night Finland. She is, like I said, on a three fight losing streak. Before joining Invicta, she was on a three fight win streak in the Finnish promotion. Won her first fight in Invicta when she was five and one, but then lost three in a row here looking to get back into the win column against one of Invicta's more popular women on the rise is the Finnish fighter Mina Grusander Shauna Bannon mama be the heavy favorite minus 375 she's 29 years old out of Dublin Ireland four and oh in her pro MMA career she's one and oh in Invicta three and oh in CLFC and she had a very decorated amateur career going nine and three in cage legacy and UK fighting championship. I'm going with the favorite as well. Sorry, Shane. <laughs> Sean Bannon. Round Let's one on. in the strawweight division. Let's get it on. Finland versus Ireland here. Oh, and Grusinder actually used to fight at Adam Weight. So 100. What's Adam Weight? 110 or 105? Straight left jab by Ben, followed by two side kicks there. Good inside low kick. By Grissender. What is up, JL? You and me both, brother. You and me both. I have been in two. Shout out Ireland. How's it going tonight, JL? Oh, and a nice one two combo. Following the kick of Bannon. Bannon's throwing the kicks nice with the, the double side kick. Oh, and Bannon trips there as Grissender read that kick perfectly. As Bannon s slips there, Grissender capitalizes on it perfectly and now is in the half guard in the top position. JL, hope you're having a great week, buddy. Cheers to you. No, no beer for me tonight. Just the tea. Just some tea as I'm recovering from a crazy flu. Put it this way, guys. I know what it's like for fighters to cut weight. Now, I lost 15 pounds Monday evening or Monday morning. It was coming out of me left, right, and center. Let's just say that. <laughs> I think my muscles were so vacant of water. My, like my arms, legs, back were like, it felt like I was being stabbed. Until I could finally get some electrolytes in me. <laughs> so I know what it's like to cut weight now. Still in the top position is Grisender. Finland versus Ireland here. And some decent striking by Bannon early in this round. Bannon does a good job of using the leverage of her opponent to get back up to her feet there. Clinched Grisender up against the cage. Nice knee to the body by Bannon. Funny how Izzy was up 3-1 on Alex and Usman was up 3-1 on Leon and Usman got laid out cold on the ground for uh, minutes and Izzy got standing TK out after five clean punches landed, yet people say Usman wins. I think just because of his wrestling pressure and his path to victory against a stand-up guy like Leon, he's done it before to stand-up guys. And because of his dominance before, I just people think I, I, I truly think people overlooked how awesome Leon's run was like JL. You're probably a fan of Leon, just like me. I, I've been following Leon Edwards since 2015. Like the guy is an incredible striker. His takedown defense is actually freaking awesome. He took down Usman, got his back and almost choked him out in the first round before he gassed due to, and you know, I don't want to take everything away from Usman. Usman did apply a ton of pressure, but let's be honest, he did gas because of the altitude, and Usman is used to the altitude, given that he does train at the team elevation in Denver. Dude, Leon's at home. He's not in the mountains. Banner just grabbed the cage, by the way, with one minute left as Grissender tries to take her back to the ground. Ref was right on it, though, which is good. Final 55 seconds left in the first round. So I'm definitely giving Leon 
way more of an edge in this one. And I'm very excited for the fight. I, I love Leon. Don't let him bully us, son. He ain't going to let anyone bully him in this one. And with the game plan going in, we're like, again, he knows what Usman's going to do. Usman's just going to pressure the fuck out of him. And if he can neutralize that, he's going to have to force Usman to strike with him. And I don't care. I don't care what Usman's coaches, training partners, or Usman says. Leon Edwards is a way better strike. Oh, head kick by Bannon. Head kick by Bannon that landed, but a good job catching it after. By Grissender. Bannon with a good takedown and hammer fist to Grissender to end this round. This is going to look great on the judges' scorecards. By Bannon. Just like the broadcaster said, statement at the end of the round. Alex has been talking a lot of trash. I really hope he gets humbled. It is reminding me of the Peter Gulpers. They got humbled real good. I will not let this go until Izzy wins the rematch. Yeah, you hate Pierre uh, pair more than more than I do, but uh, no, fair enough. Fair enough. I, I I like Leon more than I like Izzy, but I like I'm not a super fan of Izzy. I'm not a hater of Izzy at all. I respect him as a fighter and he was winning that fight he was winning that fight and he rocked Pereira too I hate when people say Izzy doesn't have knockout power Izzy has knockout power man he he almost finished Pereira in that fight I don't, even even a bunch of other fighters JL are saying like oh yeah Pereira's got his number dude Izzy almost be him man Izzy was winning the fight Sarmo's off topic but Bilal is gonna chin Usman after Leon is done with his leftovers dude how is this for a hot take if Usman loses, he lays those gloves down and retires. He's got no knees. <laughs> He's got no knees. What else does he have to prove? He was one of the best welterweights of all time. He's a legend. He's going to go into the Hall of Fame. He could retire. He could retire. He's talked so openly. By the way, at, uh, start of the second round here, folks. As JL keeps distracting us. No, I'm just kidding, buddy. Let's get it all. Four minutes and... Or 10 seconds into the second round here. Uh, Sean Bannon winning on all judges scorecards 10 9 as there's open scoring in Invicta. Body kick by Shannon, but a good back take by Grisander. She's looking to throw Bannon to the ground here. Um, but yeah, here's my hot take if Usman loses again, especially if he gets knocked out, um, he's hanging them up. That's what I think. What, 35 years old? No, is he 36? He's 35 or 36. Maybe he's 34. I don't know. Mid-30s. What else does he have to prove? His body, his knees are done. Like, the guy has to walk upstairs backwards, man. It was, uh, it was really interesting watching Cejudo break down before the last fight about us, or about Usman separating his hands from his head. And Usman was barely was almost uh, not going to be able to take this fight due to coming off hand surgery as well. So you know he's not going to want to box with Leon. He's really going to try to pressure him. And if Leon, which he probably knows because his camp is wicked smart, um, they know that they're they're game planning for this one hundred percent. Same thing that Wonder Boy said, and then the head kick caught him. <laughs> yep. Man, the Finland woman looks old as fuck. Just an observation. She is 33 years old. The altitude narrative of valid one since Edward hasn't shown to gas outside that fight. And, and Edwards looks absolutely like, honestly, Edwards looks like he's in the best shape of his life on oh, a beautiful reverse takedown by Bannon here. She looks to get into the full mount. Good defense by Grisander here. She pushes, tries to push Bannon off of her. Two minutes and 50 seconds left. Bannon on her feet here. As Grusender, oh, she tried to attack maybe the the ankle or something. As Grusender was rolling, but I don't know what she's doing now. And just elbows from the top position by Bannon. I don't know what Grusender's trying to do right now. What is up, Mr. Grant Gregory? The fact that none of you picked Anderson for the best Invicta shows you all are casuals. Dude, I'm sorry. The best woman to come out of Invicta is Cyborg, baby. Casually killing the bookies. <laughs> Megan Anderson did run uh, Invicta, I will say. Um, and like I said, special shout out to Lauren Murphy too. She had a great run in Invicta. What's up, Gregory? Thank you so much for joining, buddy. 
Gregory, are we recording our video tomorrow? What's going on? Half guard right now for Bannon. Mr. Greg, Greg, have you been watching Invicta for a while? Nah, I actually think Hill, to be honest, lasted the longest in the biggest league. That is true. Dude, Angela Hill, don't let her record fool you. She's a damn good fighter, and she has been robbed by the judges, like, I remember, like, at least four times in the UFC. Some people argue, like, five times. Um, always puts on exciting fights when she's not facing a pure wrestler. Tomorrow, mate, let's do it. This is 2018 or 17. All right, yeah, well, then all of the rest of us are casuals compared to you. <laughs> That's awesome. Supporting women's MMA, baby. Let's go. Mr. Grant Gregory, you missed a hell of a fight. I don't know. Have you been watching this entire card? The second fight on this card was an absolute war, and it should get fight of the night. Absolute, like, hands down. She's one of my female, or one of my favorite female fighters. 45 seconds left. Bannon still in the top position here. Half guard. Shots to the body here. Elbows to the body by Bannon. Bannon really trying to get into that full mount here, but holding that leg tight is Grusender. Oh, and under the left eye of Grusender is starting to swell as the elbows and punches from Bannon are starting to take their toll. 18 seconds left in the second round. Okay, Mr. Grant Gregory, hit me up on Twitter. Let me know what time you want to do it, and let's do it. And the official st stops this one and actually separates the woman. And he's giving Bannon a stern warning saying that there were shots to the back of the head. I wonder if a point's going to be taken away because he really separated them there. Like separated them. Didn't just give a warning, like separated them and stood them back up here. Stern warning. No point being taken away. Stand them back up, though. <laughs> and cheeky by Bannon, man. Grissender went to, like, give her a fist bump, and Bannon walked in, gave her a fist bump, and then set up a freaking kick. Spinning kick by Bannon there at the end of the second round. Oh, yeah. Me too. Me too. Um, it, it wasn't until I really got back into MMA, like, uh, two years ago, that I, that I started following Invicta. Before then, it was honestly before then it was Pride and UFC, right? And then I took a break in college where, like, I'd watch the big fights, I'd watch all of George St. Pierre fights, I'd watch the Diaz fights, I'd watch Anderson Silva, but uh, but I wasn't like as into it as I am now. I was very much into hockey in college, um, and then uh, yeah, it wasn't until um, yeah, two three years ago that I really got back into into MMA. So, like, self-admittedly, like, really didn't get on the Conor McGregor train at all. Like, respect everything he's done for the sport. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not a McGregor hater. But, like, that era, I didn't follow as closely as I did when I was a kid watching Prime Pride and, uh, and the UFC. <laughs> no rabid punches? Yeah, Bannon is pissed. <laughs> End of the second round, folks. We're going into the third round here. Bannon up two rounds to none. Let's get it all! But yes, Mr. Grant, hit me up on Twitter again with uh, our recording time. I got all day, baby. Nice side push kick by Bannon. The Irish left leg from hell, says the broadcast. Thirty seconds into this third round. Side kick again. Dude, Bannon's got some nice kicks. You can see that she's fought some more tie and kickboxing. <laughs> like I said, Bannon had a pretty good amateur career. What did I say? A nine and two, 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 nine and one? Pushing her opponent straight up, pushing her opponent into the cage there, continuing to pick her apart at range with those kicks. 
High kick attempt by Bannon. Grisander trying to get into the pocket here. Straight left jab by Bannon. And some nice counters by Bannon as Grisander's trying to just brawl with her in the pocket here. Good uppercut by Bannon. Bannon clinches. Elbow by Grisander. Bannon pushes her off. Three minutes and 18 seconds left. Bannon still utilizing, utilizing that kick from the outside. Knee on the entry by Bannon. Grisanda, though, she's tough as nails. She's still moving forward, trying to get into the pocket to brawl. Oh, and a nice left hook by Grisander. Grisander sets up another right hand. Bannon ate that one. Oh, and a side body kick by Bannon. Knocks Grisander to the ground. Bannon tried to take the back of Grisander, going for the heel? Oh, dangerous position by Bannon here. He's going for the... Attacking the foot here is Grisander. Twisting, but doesn't have that much leverage here is Bannon. In the splits right now. Yeah, Bannon remaining calm, attacking the body here. Grisander. Stretching the leg out here, but can't really get any leverage to attack the knee or the heel. Oh, I meant to ask the disc uh, what the Discord is. I tried to look for it, but couldn't find it. Um, exclusive members uh, get the link to the Discord. I post it every week uh, before I do my member stream. Um, but once you are an exclusive member, and and um, and I know you said someday you're you're gonna be an exclusive member again, foul one. I know you just started a new job. So, and by the way, how's the new job going? I hope it's going great. Um, basically, once you're an exclusive member, it doesn't matter if you're an exclusive member for one month or a year, it doesn't matter. You will always be part of our discord. And I post the updated because apparently discord links, um, they change every week. They, they self update themselves. Uh, I post it before every exclusive membership stream every week. And, uh, yeah, the discord just for us diehards on this channel to talk MMA, you know, game together. If you want a, a place to chat while we game, talk sports, you know, all the above. Um, just a way for us to connect outside of just the live stream chat. Okay, so I was wrong. It was Invicta 11 I first watched. I saw Aspen Lad very first fight. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Aspen Lad now in the PFL, which was 2015. And you know what? I do know the the woman who owned or the the president of the uh, of Invicta. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, uh, basically like the Dana White of Invicta. She actually used to work for the IFL. Spinning knee by Bannon. Man, she is talented with her Muay Thai. End of this fight. <laughs> Bannon screaming to the camera. She knows she, she, knows she won this one. She's not letting her go. Such a weird position. She's kind of exposing her back. Yeah, just kind of holding on to that foot. Just a desperation position. I imagine she was holding on to it, just hoping Bannon would maybe turn and then maybe she could roll with it. But it's moot now as Bannon wins this one. And again, yes, a couple Irish fighters tonight. Ben with a flying knee. Her coach is Patty Houlihan. I didn't even know that. No, Bannon looked good, man. Her striking was crisp and clean. She avoided any dangerous grappling. No, oh, solid performance. All right, official decisions coming here in just a moment. I imagine that it is Shauna Bannon out of Ireland. 
one of two Irish fighters on this card as the second one, Danny McCormack, will be challenging Valeska Machado for the strawweight championship belt. But before that, we have the co-main event coming up next year. Carolina uh, Wojcik against Idana Sil- Idiana Silva. Idiana Silva, that's who you have the one bet on, Professor Chaos, correct? Yeah, is, is Ireland going to go 2-0 and o on the card here tonight? Oh, look at that. Mr. Grand Gregory, Silva by sub, lock it in. That's what Professor Chaos wants to know. That's what Professor Chaos wants to hear. All right, will Bannon go 2-0 in her Invicta career? I mean, she's won this one, folks. There's no doubt about it. Thirty twenty-seven unanimous decision out of Ireland. Shauna Ballant. Oh, and Shannon lands back in Ireland on St. Paddy's Day. Uh, Paddy Hulohan, a former MMA fighter. He used to fight um, in the UFC flyweight, right? Benjamin, did you read the poll question, brother? Did you read the poll question? And don't you fucking dare diss Angela Hill, man. Angela Hill's fucking awesome. <laughs> um, Dude, read the poll question, Benjamin. Who's the greatest woman to- fighter to come out of Invicta? Honorable mention to Lauren Murphy as well. But he's ripping on women's MMA and he hasn't even seen the second fight of the card here tonight. Shame on you, Benjamin. Shame on you, Benjamin. You missed an absolute war. The second fight on the card tonight was unbelievable. And the fourth fight ended in a submission, but an actual pretty good brawl as well. So shame on you, dissing women's MMA right off the bat, dude. Uh, Patches of Hulahan, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Oh, rest in peace. Uh, former UFC fighter, quite a personality, does a lot for international fighters. He's a politician now in Ireland, if I'm not mistaken. Five Ds of dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, dodge, dude. I love that movie. I love that movie. In all serious, Benjamin, uh, how's it going, brother? How's it going? Um, ton of live streams this coming weekend, Benjamin. We have three on Friday, one championship, KSW and BKFC, and then Saturday, you better believe it. We're going to be out for the full seven to eight hours. UFC 286, baby, let's go. Yeah, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. I raise a Guinness in her honor. Hell yeah. Thank Fook. Uh, second fight was one of the better MMA fights I've seen in a while. Benjamin, bef- before you start ripping on women's MMA more than you already have, <laughs> you you disrespectful SOB, rewind and watch the second fight, dude. You will be entertained. Uh, Misha Tate tried to be a part of the crew to buy out Invicta, but was offered uh, the CEO position at one before she unretired. Oh, really? That's crazy. I wanted two cans, hustle a dig through the pantry. You're lost, buddy. You're lost. Unlike Benjamin, we support the women athletes in mixed martial arts here on this channel. Uh, when I was living in Ireland, Patty Houlihan was training with John Kavanaugh. Oh, no way. Benjamin, you joining us for any of the Friday streams? Because I know you'll be joining us on Saturday. <laughs> that sounded better in my head 
out of SPG. Silva is my obvious lock. My point was Cyborg is 10 times better than the others in that pool. You could have just said that off the bat, dude. Then I didn't have to rip you for the last five minutes. But yeah, Cyborg was my pick as well. <laughs> Obviously. But, you know, I do I do believe Angela Hill doesn't get enough respect. Um, hell, even the guru, who we all know the MMA guru's position on women's MMA, he even gives Angela Hill respect as she's been robbed like five fucking times in the UFC. But uh, yeah, Cyborg, I mean... What a fucking athlete and what a savage, dude. I hope she fights at least one more time in Bellator. Scott Croker keeps saying, oh, no, we're good. She's going to fight again. But, like, I don't know. She's making bank boxing in Brazil right now. But, yes, Benjamin, I agree. And you could have come out with that right off the bat. <laughs> but, uh, Benjamin, out of the three fights on Friday, what are you most looking forward to? One championship, KSW, or BKFC? Top three favorite stouts. So I'm very much into the craft beer. So I love the barrel age imperial stouts. Um, Kentucky bourbon barrel aged imperial stouts. Any flavor. Give me peanut butter. Give me vanilla, coconut. I mean, I just love barrel aged imperial stouts. I'll pick opposite of you this time to make it interesting. Guinness, Beamish, and this coffee milkshake stout out of Toronto. Oh, uh, actually, one sec. I have it right here. Oh. I hope I didn't make Benjamin leave because I was ripping him. Um... This is one of the best stouts I've ever had. It's a peanut butter stout uh, from Dangerous Men. Oh, my God. It's so good. Oh, here he is. <laughs> I was like, please, Benjamin, don't leave. Uh, as for how it's going to go down, it's probably a decision. Okay, Mr. Grant Gregory says it's going to be a submission. But I guess Beamish is a porter. What are the headlines of one and bare knuckle? It's not the platinum Perry card. That one is in the end of April. And that one's actually like a full on pay-per-view. I think that one is going to be like 50 bucks versus just like if you get it on the app. Um, that one's the end of April. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. This next fight's about to start, Benjamin. Um, so we'll go over the cards after this next fight. Uh, the one championship, it is for a title, which I'm excited for. And the BKFC fight, I actually just switched the schedule. We were going to be doing PFL Challenger Series, but I saw that there's BKFC. So I'm way rather going to watch BKFC than the wannabe Dana White's Contender Series. Um, from what I saw, it's a good card. Nguyen's fighting, um, and he's competed in one championship before, if I'm not mistaken. So the BKFC card looks pretty good. We'll go over the card here after this fight before the main event. We'll go over the BKFC card and uh, the one championship card after this fight or before this stream ends. But uh, they should be good ones. I mean, the Friday fights, one one will be better than most because it is a title fight. Uh, a biggie for one fight night nine it's going to be lightweight title belt friday fights but yes a uh, regina israel is fighting oh round one ladies and gentlemen let's get it all and uh, i'm going for i'm going for the brazilian as well locking it in uh Nguyen is pronounced win well you know what they should just spell it that way then so that dumb North Americans like me don't f fuck it up. <laughs> uh, here, let me update the ticker on the bottom of the screen here. Benjamin, how's your week going, buddy? It's good to see you here tonight. As always. I got the Polish fighter, says Foul One. Shane's got the Polish fighter as well. 
I think her spaghetti straps are going to be ripped. Yeah. Doesn't look like the smartest top to wear in an MMA fight, but to which their own. Uh, this week has been a perpetual Monday. <sighs> Bro, I can empathize. Benjamin, I lost 15 pounds on Monday as a stomach flu hit me. Let's just say I know what it's like to cut weight now. <laughs> Came out of me left, right, and center. <laughs> I swear my muscles had no water in them because it felt like knives were stabbing me everywhere, but uh, finally was able to get some electrolytes in me. Today I felt a lot better. Drinking green tea here. Uh, to stay alert, but uh, the worst is past. The worst is past. One punch thrown in 90 seconds. For fuck's sakes. Yeah, three minutes left. Co-main event of the evening here. Can you pass that stomach flu to me so I can lose 15 pounds? Dude, it was crazy. Like, my face was sunk in. No joke. Like, it was nuts, man. I have never, I've never had a flu that bad. <laughs> in, in my 29 years on this earth, that was the craziest flu I've ever had. And then I had a fever the second day, but at least I was, like, functional. It was bad. It was bad. Let's just say that. From 4 a.m. to 4 p.m., I could not leave the restroom. I literally sat naked in the shower with like my phone propped up just watching Netflix because as soon as water hit my stomach or I let out a fart, it was bad. <laughs> but I'll, I'll stop grossing you guys out. <laughs> it, it's been a hard week, but uh, Benjamin, hump day today, baby. It's going to be a great weekend of mixed martial arts. <laughs> but here you go. <sighs> you should have done a shower steam then. Oh, dude, I tried everything. But let's just say it was so bad that I would move. My stomach acid would move. And it was game over. It was that bad. <laughs> the official telling these women to engage. Yeah, we're, if this was one championship, the freaking yellow cards would be out. Oh, and here we go. Now they start to engage. Ref needs to stop and card him. Yeah, this has been honestly the most boring fight on the card thus far. Um, <laughs> and Benjamin's just like <laughs> right now. But I'm telling you guys, for the most part, and for an average Invicta card, this one has been a, above average in my opinion. It's been pretty enjoyable watching this card thus far. Some guy named himself Black Panther in one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as you type it, they engage. 50 seconds left here. And, I mean, no one should win this first round. <laughs> well, since this first round is about to end, 30 seconds left. Can't imagine anything crazy is going to happen here in this co-main event. So we will just highlight these fighters a little bit. Karolina Wojcik, the Polish assassin, assassin, 10 and 3 in her pro MMA career. She is coming off a loss. I mean, the odds for this one are near even. She's plus 100. She's 28 years old. Final 10 seconds of the first round. Uh, two and 0 in KSW, one and one in Invicta, one and 0 in Dana White's contender series. She lost her last fight to the champion, Valeska Machado. Uh, before then was on a two, four, five fight win streak. Brave CF, KS, two wins in KSW, contender series, and then a win in Invicta. She's fought in EFC. Man, this chick should be absolutely crushing it right now, given her experience in pro MMA. she's fought in efc she was an efc title holder she's fought in ventura uh brave ksw contender series and invicta where she's got wins in every single one of those so no wonder the odds for this one are pretty even her opponent the 21 year old out of brazil 12 and 3 in her pro mma career mel pitbull uh idana idiana silva 
one and own LFA. Uh, she also lost split decision to the champion Valeska Machado in her last fight. She won, she beat Amanda Torres in LFA. And before then, she was on a two, four, five, six fight win streak as well, fighting in Fury Show and a bunch of other promotions that I do not know. Dun, 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 dun. Nine, nine, round one. <laughs> all right, round two, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it all. And I'll uh, fire through your comments here. Yeah, for the experience of this Polish woman, I'm surprised she's not engaging more than she is right now. Green nine, nine, Rose and Asparja would be proud. Oh, don't get me started. Yeah, even the judges are like, mm, two judges gave it to Silva, one gave it to Carolina. She won Dana White's Contender Series, and Dana called it the worst win in history of the sport. <laughs> That's funny. What's up, Jules? Thank you so much for joining. Jules, I highly recommend uh, rewinding and watching the second fight on the card. It was an absolute war. I'm going to tell everybody that. Like, it, it was one of the most entertaining women's fights I've seen in a long time. And it was one of the bloodiest fights I've seen in a long time, men's or women. Uh, the Brazilian won the first round based on octagon control. Shane, we ain't going to argue with you there. Dan win? Better get a spectacular finish on Friday so we can say, wow, that window. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin, comment of the night. Better late than never. Where are you at, though? That's what she said. That's what she said. Oh, that was great. That was great. Where you at, though? <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> minus five to minus five. <laughs> Thanks. I will been under the weather, Judy. Uh, Jules, I should say. I've I'm I've been I've been under the weather this week too, so I can empathize with you. Feeling a little bit better now. Got my tea, got my tea, my herbal green tea, and it's been helping. Uh, yeah, I I don't remember them doing it a couple months ago. I think, I forget the last Invicta event we did. Maybe it was like 48 or something like that on this channel. But I don't remember there being open scoring then. But yeah, so no live betting. They are sponsored by BetMGM now. No live betting because of the live scoring. However, um they do have the odds closed right before the bout starts. They are pretending fighting. At least they're like th like at least they're throwing the Carla Sparza and Rose fight. They weren't they weren't even throwing. They were just they were just dancing. Capoeira. <sighs> Unfortunately, I mean, and this sucks, right? We didn't want to see this. When you see the the two and zero. Oh, the one and no fighters put on an absolute war, one that got us excited. And then the co main event is this. I mean, the main event better deliver. This fight reminds me of when Machado won the belt, Machado running all around the octagon. <laughs> These girls are on track to replace Angela Hill and <laughs> Megan Anderson in the poll. <laughs> I like um, Angela Hill. I'm not going to lie. She at least tries to put on a show in the UFC. Does she have little to zero ground game? Yes, but can she brawl? Absolutely. High kick attempt by Silva. One minute and 20 seconds left in the second round. Again, I'm less disappointed with Silva given that she's like still really young. But like the Polish fighter here, I mean, come on. I hope Machado does not do the same. No way to retain the belt. Absolutely. Fingers crossed, knock on wood. Uh, is one of their control is one of their controllers disconnected? Quite possibly. Some people like losers. Oh, come on, man. I know you're I know you're you're ripping on me, but like you gotta admit, like she's had five fucking robberies in the UFC, and it's horrendous. Even the MMA guru, who we all know his opinions on a lot of the women fighters in the UFC, he even gives props to Angela Hill. So come on, Benjamin. 
<laughs> Megan Anderson, different story. She crushed a lot of cans in the UFC and then got destroyed by Amanda Nunes. How is that racist? Oh my God, so boring. Oh, end of the second round, folks. And yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 2018. As long as Silva wins, so Professor Chaos can make some money. That that that's all we really care about at this point, folks. <laughs> if anything, Benjamin. Assuming Angela Hill's a robber, whatever. No, she's been robbed. They've been robbing her. The UFC been robbing her, man. She ain't doing the robbing. They've been robbing her. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. The chat is way better than this fight. Yeah, Benjamin's on fire. <laughs> No complaint about ads during the fight. <laughs> Activate A. What's going on? Damn, I was going to bet on Silva. I pushed out. Man, like I said, this card... What's, what's funny about this card is the inexperienced fighters have put on better performances than these two right now. And it is tied. 19-19 going into this third. God, ads thought Isha was going crazy. It's a mediocre fight, but I might get another perfect prediction. Oh, and Pitbull got poked in the eye here, in the right eye of Silva. Just when we thought this fight couldn't get any longer, folks. <laughs> Ouch. Ooh, that looked like it hurt there. All right, and they're back in it. I guess the Bannon fight wasn't wasn't boring, so I shouldn't say all the cards at the top of, or all the fights on the top of this card were bad, but yeah, this one ain't great. Silver, just take this to the ground and get a submission, girl. Let's go. Three minutes and 58 seconds. Come on. And you know what is the saddest thing apart about this is the Carla and Rose fight was worse <laughs> in the UFC. Um, I actually love women's MMA when the fighters are talented, like Grasso, Rebus, etc. But bad fights are just bad fights. No, absolutely. Like in all seriousness, same, same, buddy. But that's what I'm saying, Benjamin. Like you should seriously watch the second fight on this card. Like technique wise, the American, you know, looked a lot like Julia Pena, the way that she like just, just chucked her fists when she moved forward. But it was a fucking brawl, dude. Both the women just covered in blood, both the women scrambling, both the women going for takedowns, both the women attacking the legs. Like the, um, the Colombian woman had one leg and she was still shooting perfect takedowns. It was, it was an awesome fight. It was a three round fucking war dude. And like, I, I was, I'm still impressed. I'm still swooning over it. So just highly recommend checking out the second fight on the card. You think this is going to be Machado's last fight before UFC call up deserves another go after contender series. I think if Machado puts on an entertaining fight, there's definitely a possibility. But as Jules was saying, um, as Jules was saying, her last fight was not the most entertaining as she was running around the octagon. You should uh, say he has nothing to do with ads, but we know better. I Look, I, t I turn on monetization and that's it. And then YouTube does the rest. 
Uh, Ariel, Ariel is trying to argue women's flyweight division was better than strawweight. Uh, yeah. Guess she could hang better than Nunes. <laughs> <laughs> I think flyweight is getting better. I think at the top of flyweight, it's good. But no, strawweight, like, I'm sorry. Strawweight is, is a way better. Dude, I love Zhang Weili. Like, she is so awesome. And I hope... If Rose and her ever fight again, that she knocks the fucking piss out of Rose Namajunas. I cannot stand Rose Namajunas. I lost all respect for her as a fighter. When you try to defend your belt by doing capoeira, dancing instead of fighting, Zhang Wei Li is an absolute killer. I know, I know. <laughs> you and Benjamin messing with me tonight. Come on, guys. I'm sick. <laughs> I ain't on my game here tonight. <laughs> no, I'm just pumped that you guys are here. As always, you all are amazing. I appreciate every single one of you. Glad to see both of you here. Flyweight division is so strong. Two of their best ranked are strawweights. Whoever lands a single punch in the last 30 seconds wins this fight. Yes, we are in the last... Look at that. Foul one doing my job. Last 30 seconds of this fight, folks. And Silva's turning it on a little bit here. Let's get pumped. Let's get pumped. Come on, Silva. I cannot believe he didn't take this shit to the ground. Right hand by Silva. 15 seconds left. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Final 10 seconds. Who's going to take it in this nail-biting close fight, ladies and gentlemen? This fight is so close. Silva running in, and she clinches. Why would you clinch? Look at the finish it. And it's all over. It's over. Bro, it was 19-19 going into the third. <laughs> Dude, maybe that's why they didn't engage because they didn't want to show any nudity. I'm feeling better messing with whomever. I love it. I love it. Flip a coin. Who's got a coin? Let's flip her. Straps, yes. I got you. I got you. Yeah, they did Benjamin. Nothing happened. That was her plan all along, eh? Look, nothing happened there yet. Yet Silva's getting the ice pack on her right eye. Oh, because of the eye poke. I was like, what the fuck? I love the broadcast trying to salvage this too. It was all about Silva taking real estate in the center of the octagon. This fight should count as a loss on both women's record. Draw for the lack of punches. 30 30 again i blame the polish fighter more than you know the the 21 year old like the 21 year old it's a learning experience you got to be more aggressive the polish fighter former champion who's fought in like a ton of really big promotions like come on you should know better 27 27 well she got poked in the eye activated that's why so i don't think the judges are going to a show of mutual so you, bro i mean okay at least you're showing respect but like come on a win an octagon control is crazy yo romero took real estate in the center of the octagon against adesanya honestly i rank this that fight then this or uh as, as boring fights, I rank both of Yola Romero and this one above Carla and Rose. Again, that was the worst ever, the worst fight I've ever seen. And I like, I will never cheer for Rose ever again. Ever. She's now my least favorite fighter of all time. Oh, God, it's a split decision, of course. Give it to the 21-year-old. Screw the Polish chick for not doing anything, given her experience. Oh, no. The Polish assassin won. Dude, even the, even the commentators are like, I don't even know <laughs> what happened in that one. 
All right. Well, let's move on to the main event of the evening. Absolute dominance. <laughs> yeah, none of those two girls is getting a shot at the at the at the title next, let's be honest. You can't after that performance. All right, let's hope that the main event of the evening is a little bit more action packed here. Let let's hope it's a brawl like that second fight we saw tonight. Because you know what? Props to Saori Cannon and Amanda Machio uh, Machioche for putting on the best fight here on the card. An absolute war. I mean, the American coming out swinging Cannon just going through the ringer with the leg kicks and still being able to get the takedowns and employing the ground and pound. I mean, that was an unbelievable fight. And uh, I tip my toque to those two women. Drunk judges, down one unit on the night, live to bet another day. Professor Chaos, I just feel bad. I feel bad for you because that, that was fucked. <laughs> Wait for it. Uh, Valeska Machado will run all around. Well, I hope Danny McCormack... We'll chase her down and beat her up for doing that. 3-3, three, three, I got to break this chain. Um, have you seen Austin Vanderford versus Fabian Edwards? No, I haven't. I'm not a fan of Vanderford. I was so pumped. I was so pumped when uh, when the Canadian just knocked him out. What was it? It was, it was, it was like, like a minute into the first round or something like that on short notice. Oh, that was amazing. Five one four foul one, yeah. And when Aaron Jeffrey took that fight on short notice and beat the piss out of Vanderford, that was awesome. Aaron Jeffrey's another one who's going to be uh, hopping on the channel down the road. He's in camp right now, preparing for his next fight. One more win, and he's going to get a title shot. Knock on wood. Didn't quite make it to the UFC. Had two runs on Contender Series, but he's found a home in Bellator. Uh, Grave Digger Jones, I'm about to give you my Prime subscription on Twitch. Uh, watching that second fight uh, now looks good so far. Missed it earlier. Yeah, it was it was a brawl. Again, not super technical because the women are, were activated. And by the way, shout out to you, Activated. Thank you for joining. Um, the women, I mean, one was 1-0, and one was 2-0 or two and one or something like that, right? Like the records weren't anything crazy, but that's why, like they had the fire to like really want to compete and they showed it, man. All three rounds, they did not stop brawling. I'm picking Machado. You are down by one. Uh, Vanderford versus Fabian was worse than Carla Rose. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to fact check that. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> Actually, I mean, if Vanderford was in it, I mean, Fabian Edwards is not the most exciting fighter either. Let's go, main event of the evening. Hell yeah, Gravedigger Jones, by the way, does a lot of Twitch streaming. Let's support our boy, Gravedigger Jones. I got to make a Twitch account because I always watch Gravedigger Jones, but I don't have a Twitch account anymore because I had one with my last company that I left. So I'll make a Twitch account just so I can comment in that, buddy. Gravedigger Jones is going for the champion. Valeska Machado locking it in. All right, I'm just going to update the ticker on the bottom of the screen. Then we'll highlight both of the fighters as they make their walkout to the octagon. Shane, are you going to give me first pick? Oh, no, you already got Machado. Um, You know what, Shane? Screw it. Let's go with the Irish woman. We're going with Mad Mac McCormick. Locking it in, Shane. Ireland's going two and zero oh on this card, baby. Main event, main event of the evening is next. The second girl from Dublin making her walk out. By the way, absolutely love the announcer. Are you ready? Gotta go for the Irish. It's Danny's birthday today, too. Let's go, baby. Let's go.
Making her walk out now. Oh, love the fight kit that she's fighting in. The Irish colors. All right. Making her walk out right now, Danny McCormick. She's six and two in her pro MMA career. She is the big underdog, plus 360, 33 years old, fighting out of Dublin, Ireland. Four and one in Bellator, one and zero oh in Invicta. She beat Maria Mazar via unanimous decision in her last Invicta fight. Before then, she was on a two-fight losing streak, but before that was perfect in her professional MMA career where she fought uh, four out of her first five fights in Bellator, one of them in National Fighting Championship. She uh, One of her Bellator wins was via ground and pound. One was via rear naked choke. The other three were unanimous decision. Uh, she lost her first loss in Bellator. She was knocked out in the first round and then lost a close split decision in Century on Fight Championship before joining Invicta. Her last appearance was in Invicta 50 where she won unanimous decision and called for the title. She had a decorated amateur Career going six and three, ending on a win. Valeska Machado, the strawweight champion, is making her walk out to the octagon right now. Tina Black, Valeska Machado, 12 and three in her pro MMA career out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. She's 27 years of age. She's currently on a four fight win streak. She's got some swag. Dancing, making her walk out to the octagon here. Three and O oh in Invicta, and she lost her fight on Dana White's Contender Series back in 2021. She's a good grappler as well. She actually won in 2022, uh, in the middle of 2022, uh, Submission Circus. She won via decision in a grappling match. Upon losing to Pierre Rodriguez in Contender Series, she came back in Arena Global and beat uh, Janelisha Morais, won her grappling match, Gen then in, uh, joined Invicta, where she went 3-0. She beat Liz Tracy, Ediana Silva, who we just saw fight, and Carolina Wojcik, who we just saw fight as well. Uh, she beat him. She went to the judges' scorecards on all of those fights. Before her loss on Contender Series, she was on a two, four, six fight win streak. She fought in Future FC, Shooto Brazil, Warriors Mix. But again, Shooto Brazil is no joke, ladies and gentlemen. No fights recorded on the amateur scene for Machado. I'm going for the Irish woman, like I said. Let's go, baby. Moicano versus Armin booked April 29th. I saw that. Armin Sarukian against a money Moicano. I want that money, baby. I like Armin in that fight. It's a nice grappling matchup, dude. I love Armin Sarukian. I personally think he beat Gamrot, but that one was a razor thin decision. Moicano by sub. Money. I want that money. Dude, I love Moicano. <laughs> and Benjamin's calling me the racist. <laughs> All right. Main event of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Five five-minute rounds for the Invicta Strawweight Championship belt here. Are you ready? God, I love Joe Martinez, baby. I fucking love Joe Martinez. Let's go, baby. He's getting me pumped for this championship fight, and I hope he's getting you folks pumped too. Let's go. <laughs> Bum, ba -dum, ba -bum. Why did Danny leave Bellator anyway? Four and one record seems good. Competition maybe in Invicta was just a little bit better. 
I don't know. That's a good question. Like I said, I don't follow Invicta super closely, <laughs> but uh, every now and then when we're free Wednesday nights and there's a card, we want to show the women our support here on the City Light Project YouTube channel, show them some love as well. So that's a good question. Does anyone in the chat know why Danny left Bellator? Was was there just a, a clear path to get a title in Invicta in another promotion? Overkill? More like overrated. <laughs> uh, I like her, okay? I like Angela Hill. Yeah, Belter seems to love Irish fighters. All right, folks. Round one in this championship fight. Main event of the evening. I do love the custom kits that they can wear in Invicta. Round one. Let's get it all. And pretty much everyone and any promotion outside <laughs> the UFC. Danny just cut her hair and changed her last name to Sabatella. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, and they're throwing bumps. There's already more action in the first 30 seconds of this fight than there was in the entire fight before this in the co-main event. The champion, Machado, against the challenger. McCormick and McCormick's nose is already bloody here as Machado landed a good right hand. Inside leg kick on McCormick. McCormick, though, landed a good counter left. Good movement by Machado early. A nice duck by McCormick, and she lands a good counter there. Already a better brawl than we saw in the co-main event, and it damn well should be as this is a title fight. <laughs> Dude, Benjamin is always, every stream, he's in the running for comment of the night. And we fucking love you, Benjamin. I love the ole, 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 ole chance in the audience. A good right hand and a left by McCormick. Despite getting tagged early and getting her nose bloodied up, McCormick's actually answered with some good counter shots early in this fight. Three minutes and 20 seconds left in the first round. Ooh, a nice left hook by Machado. Oh, and a nice one-two. Machado just knocked down McCormick. Machado just knocked down McCormick. Machado in the top position. Laying down some big shots in the top position. Some hammer fists in the full guard. Machado just laying down hammer fists here. McCormick trying to roll out of this. Beautiful right hand by Machado as she knocked down McCormick clean. McCormick trying to push Machado off this. Her nose is definitely busted now. McCormick trying to roll out of this. Machado grabs her back with the hooks in. Machado going for the rear naked. Not quite. Hooks in. Shots the side of her head. Shane, I'm going to lose this beer bet, but I don't give a fuck. I will take a fun fight like this over a beer bet loss any day of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Going for the neck now is Machado. She doesn't even have the body triangle employed yet. She doesn't even need it employed yet. Two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. One day, Jillian Robertson will be in the top five. Fuck yeah, she will be. Oh, Canada, baby. Oh, Canada. I love Jillian Robertson. She just has to just clean up her striking just a little bit, but she's a fucking beautiful grappler. One of my favorite uh, my favorite memories of 2022 is when uh, she submitted Rose Namajunas with ease. <laughs> in, in grappling, but still. Ole, 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 ole. One minute, 40 seconds left. The body triangle uh, not employed. Jez, a good job by McCormick for ripping the feet off of her torso, reversing here and there, back up to their feet. Great job by McCormick for weathering the storm. Come on, McCormick. We need some knees. We need some knees from that tie clinch, baby. Machado might be an Angela Hill region 
damn rights broadcast. They're like, that, that co-main event may, may have been lacking in action, but this one's making up for it. Hell yeah. Again, guys, like I said, go watch the second fight on this card. Fight of the night, hands down. I just want to remind you all that uh, Machado is Brazilian. Angela Hill is American. 45 seconds left in the first round. McCormick tried to go for the takedown there. Good defense by Machado. They're in the clinch here. It looks like McCormick grabbed the top of Machado there just for a second. 30 seconds left in the first round. And Machado's got power in that right hand. Machado's pretty big for 115, no? She, I mean, and I say that as a compliment. Like, she looks tough as nails. And she's clearly got power in her punches. McCormick looking for a takedown here. Yeah, Machado's clearly going to win this first round, but good job by McCormick for recovering, getting back up to her feet, and then getting some control time late in that first round. Fuck yeah, that first round made up for that god-awful co-main event. McCormick is like a poor woman's Roxanne Mata Ferry. <laughs> I mean, Roxanne Mata Ferry is quite a bit lankier. Mata Ferry actually had some good jujitsu too. <laughs> Cha-ching. I just have a button that I just click and you guys see ads. I'm kidding. I don't. Like I said, I just turn on. I just I just turn on uh, monetization on my channel, and YouTube takes care of the rest. So, blame YouTube for interrupting the stream. I'll take that five cents CPM, baby. Let's go. <laughs> you know how I know you're a loyal Jules because you're still here. You're still here. Round two. Let's Dude, I am too. I thought she was done. <laughs> Wonder what Invicta pays their champs. That's a good question. Up right now on the fly. Machado obviously won that first round. 10 9 on all the judges, or 10 on all the judges' scorecards. So Chris Cyborg got paid a hundred grand at Invicta FC thirteen. Um, but I'm not sure how much they just pay their champion. One minute into this second round. Three minutes and 38 seconds here. They clinch up again. Ty clinch from McCormick. She had a good knee to the body. Oh my God. Something came up and I was like, 13 million. And I was Manny Machado. <laughs> Wow, that's surprising. Uh-oh, Coco Ung is here. Coco Ung, we love you. Just stop spamming the chat. Machado fading. Coco Ung is like a diehard supporter. But he just loves spamming the chat. Hello, Coco Ung. We see you, brother. We see you. Just realized it's five round. Hell yeah, for the championship. Oh, Jules, I hope you feel better by this weekend as we have a ton of live streams this weekend and uh, I hope you feel well enough to join us for a few of them at least. Two minutes and 30 seconds here. Grinding this one out is McCormick. 
making Machado work in the clinch here, knees to the body. I mean, it's smart, smart by McCormick because they were exchanging strikes early in the first round. She got tagged, so she's probably like, okay, I felt this girl's power, and I don't want to hit her again. I don't want her to hit me again, catch me again. We love Coco. Die Hard One Championship fan. And you can see McCormick under the right eye, bruised and bleeding, but And McCormick is winning in this position, as the broadcaster said. One minute and 30 seconds left in the second round. Nice uppercut and left hook by McCormick. Knee by Machado there, but McCormick landed a left on the exit. They're separated. Foot stomps. All former UFC fighters back in the mid-2000s, and today Kamaru Usman would be proud. So far, Val's proved me wrong. She's not running yet. She landed, She got a good n- knockdown in the first round. One minute left in the second round. McCormick clinching up against the cage again. And McCormick's like, she's staying busy in the clinch. She's not just holding her opponent up against the cage. She's landing those left hooks and shots to the side of... Machado's head. Machado doing a good job of defending, but not landing much offense here. Yo, I know the announcers are are only commenting on the good things that uh, Machado is saying. Oh wait, am I being the announcer bias? <laughs> I feel like the announcers are heavily in favor of Machado here, even though McCormick is winning the second round. 15 seconds left, and this round's going to McCormick. Center of the ring. Left hand by McCormick, man. McCormick's face may be bloody, but I think she won that second round. Nice left hand by McCormick. Dude, that round went to McCormick. Machado should stay away from the fence next round. Not sure she can do that for another three rounds. Sorry, folks, I got to be a little bit more quieter now just because my roommate uh, is sleeping or is going to bed. I'm like awaiting a text message that's like, Isha, I have to work tomorrow. Ooh, Danny McCormick's face is bruised and battered. You can see that cut under the left eye. Oh, and that was those first those first uh, round punches. Two shots, and the second one knocked her down. <laughs> now I just think it is a 10-8 round for Machado, except for the lady. <laughs> first round should have been a 10-8. Uh, I don't think so. I think it was scored correctly. Why are they cleaning the mats in between? Apparently these mats are pretty slippery and they've had some issues early in the night of some fighters slipping. So they're just drying off any sweater or water from uh, the corners. Damn, she can land a punch. Dude, yeah. Machado, she's got that reach. She's got that good. She's got that good striking, which is why... Danny McCormick is employing that clinch game. The thing about 10 is we only really see them when there's like absolutely nothing coming from the opposition, right? Whereas McCormick at least ended the round with something. So that's my argument. I'll play devil's advocate. Boys and jewels. Three minutes and 45 seconds left in this third round.
Push kick attempt by McCormick. Oh, and a nice right hand by Machado. One knockdown. You know, like like I said, we just we usually don't see them unless the opponent doesn't do anything. I'm not I'm not arguing that Machado like dominated that round. She totally did, but McCormick did end the round with something, and I, that's that's the reason. Again, playing devil's advocate. That's my argument. Uh, I didn't realize Dan Hardy and Veronica got married until last week. Oh, what a lucky man. What a lucky man. Is that John and Danny's uh, corner, Connor's coach? Kavanaugh? I believe she is. I believe she does train out at SBG. Yes, Veronica Hardy is. Oh, my God. So beautiful. Two minutes left in this third round. And McCormick grinding here. I mean, it's a solid game plan. Is it super entertaining? Not necessarily, but again, like she's going into the trenches right now. And Machado doing a good job in this round. Oh, beautiful right hand by Machado. Oh, Machado almost landed that right hand again. Straight left jab by Machado. Great job by Machado in this third round, making those adjustments and staying out of McCormick's clinch. More so anyways than she did in that second round. McCormick now looking for that takedown. No, and the broadcast said it there perfectly. Machado, if if she can pick her pick up, sorry, pick her opponent apart at range. Oh, and they separate again. And did Machado land that left? I think she did. It was just a straight left on the exit. One minute and five seconds left in this third round. Oh, and a beautiful right hand by Machado. Right down the middle. Machado tags her again. Uh she's Venezuelan, I think. If I'm not mistaken, uh Benjamin. I think she's Venezuelan. But yes, formerly Machado. Yeah, that's... And she hasn't fought for quite a while. What, two years or so? No, her and Dan Hardy are hands down the cutest MMA power couple now that the Ortegas are... No more. Oh, and McCormick now stepping forward, landing a few shots there. See, this round, I'm giving it to Machado again because she just she simply did more damage. And that's it for the third round. Yeah, I'm giving the third round to Machado. She did more damage. She landed some nasty strikes in that one. Okay, then teeth got me thinking she's English. Dude, Veronica's got beautiful teeth. What you talking about? Mas Macedo. Uh, 29, 28, Machado. I got it. I got it that too. Plug that sucker in, Professor Chaos. Plug that in, baby. No, all good, brother. Thank you so much for joining throughout this entire event. It really means a lot, as always. I will see you bright and early, for me anyways, on Friday. And uh, I mean, three fights on Friday, Professor Chaos. Three fight cards on Friday that we will be streaming on this channel. One championship, KSW, as well as BK. FC. Thank you so much for all your support, Professor Chaos. As always, fucking love you, brother. Thank you so much for joining the live stream. Let's get it all! 
she keeping her distance and do the damage at the right time on Danny? Absolutely. Judges got it 29 28 for Machado. <laughs> I'm in bed. No way I'm getting up. Fair enough, brother. Fair enough. <laughs> Come on, it's not over. Stop the fight! <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's comment of the night. Oh, McCormick landed a good left hand there. And cage warriors, I know, but we have to pick our battles, right? Um, there's overlap between cage warriors and uh, KSW, so that's why we're not doing cage warriors. But yes, if you guys want to have the triple and double screens going, cage warriors is also on Friday. PFL Challenger Series is also on Friday, but we're just doing three. We're doing one championship in the morning, KSW in the early afternoon, and then BKFC in the evening. But yeah, cage warriors London is also going down on Friday as well. Activate A. Wait, judges have McCormick? No, 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 no. Machado, sorry. Machado, 29 28. That's what I saw. Am I going crazy here? Yes, well deserved comment of the night. Two judges have McCormick head. That's crazy. So two judges had McCormick winning. I, I was honestly reading the comments and getting the Dan Hardy stop the fight thing going. So. Um, I didn't actively look at the live scoring there, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. Uh, uh, right at the beginning of the rounds, we see the live scoring. Yeah, right at the beginning of the round. Machado looking for a trip here. She's in the clinch again. Two minutes and 35 seconds left in this championship round. Fourth round in this championship fight. They separate again. Going for body lock again is McCormick pushing Machado up against the cage. You can see Machado looking up at the clock here. Just a little frustrated. McCormick trying to drag Machado to the ground, and she does just for one second, though. Machado back up instantly. Back in the center of the cage. Two minutes left in this fourth round. Oh, straight left by McCormick. Sh left hook by McCormick. Machado has slowed down here. McCormick, she still has gas in the tank. She's just pressuring and pressuring and pressuring Machado here. Machado's fading, folks. Machado's fading. Breathing heavily from her mouth here. 20 minutes into this fight. And McCormick gets the takedown. Right into side control is McCormick now. McCormick inside control, knee on the body, looking to get into mount. She doesn't get into mount. She gets into half guard here. Machado trying to push her off. Machado doing a good job of using her right leg to get over the left thigh of McCormick. Now Machado going for a heel hook. Machado going for a heel hook. This could be it. 35 seconds left in this fourth round. We're going into a fifth, baby. Damn, minus 500 Machado, by the way. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. <laughs> 21 seconds. Machado's still holding on to that ankle, but I don't think McCormick's in much danger right here in this position. She's sprawling and oh, hard shots on the top position as... McCormick is going to end this round. 10 seconds left, and she's in the top position of Machado here in half guard, but postured up in half guard here, and she landed some hard shots on the chin. 
McCormick won that fourth round, folks. McCormick won that fourth round. Going into the fifth and final round here. All right, let's take a look at the live stats when they pop up on screen because I'm very interested to see how the judges are scoring this one. And honestly, folks, the judges have gotten every single fight right this evening thus far. So I'm interested to see how they're scoring this one. And I'd like... I will say this, like Machado is 100% the better striker and she's done a tremendous job of defending the takedowns and the pressure mostly throughout this entire fight, but she's starting to fade and that defense and that extra strength and energy was starting to fade in this fourth round. And McCormick, I mean, her gas tank, it's relentless. It's, it, it doesn't seem to empty. That has to be a unanimous round. Heel hook is a cheap shot for winning. <laughs> I love when fighters pull off heel hooks right, right at the end of the fight. It, Shane, the last fight was garbage, though. So, I mean, you can't say that that was a robbery. You cannot say that last fight was a robbery when both of the women did fucking nothing. I'm sorry. I wholeheartedly disagree, and I picked the, the Brazilian to win. All right, fifth and final round. Let's get it! So one, oh yeah, McCormick 39 on two of the judges' scorecards. And McCormick gets the takedown again. Shane, I could say that maybe the last judge didn't get it right, but saying it's a robbery, like, again, you guys are throwing, like, uh, maybe not you guys, Shane, you're throwing the robbery term out like loosey-goosey. Robbery implies fucking robbery, dude. Not close fight could go either way. Uh, Megan Anderson has blood splattered on her headset. That's hilarious. And a good job by Machado for getting up after being taken down early in this fight, one minute into the fifth and final round. And there's another takedown by McCormick. Again, credit where credit is due, man. The, the pressure that McCormick has been putting on. Piotr Jan must run. Which fight? <laughs> Put it this way. In the O'Malley fight, I, I, I think that's leaning more towards a robbery than, than the, the last fight we just saw. But uh, yeah, Marab ragged all them. <laughs> Twitter still seems to disagree. How can you win on throwing that many takedowns? And new McCormick is a dog. Not the most exciting striker, not the most exciting fighter, but she is a dog. But again, Shane, like I I'll respect that you think, and you know, you you may be right that the Brazilian should have won that last one. But again, I, I can't accept using the term robbery for that one when it was so close and both the women did nothing, absolutely nothing, to show the judges they deserve that. Fucking nothing. Two minutes and 42 seconds left in the fifth round. <laughs> Isha being racist and now Fallon being sexist. <laughs> Back up on their feet now. McCormick, relentless pressure again. And again, it's not like McCormick's just holding Machado up against the cage, Marab style, doing nothing. She's, she's throwing some shots on the counter. She's throwing shots while she's on there. Now, yes, they're muffin shots up against the cage, but on the, on the exit, she is throwing. <laughs> Benjamin, our boy Jelani in the chat, he gave me the, he gave me the, the pass, bro, because I'm brown. I ain't going to use it, but he gave me the pass. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. One minute and 30 seconds left in the fifth round. Going for the arm bar is Machado here. Oh, my God. 
Does she have it? One minute and 20 seconds. Machado, she might get the arm bar. Oh, and the arm is free, dude. I thought she was going to get it there. It was extended for a few seconds. Machado is gassed, man. McCormick in top position here. Almost in the full mount. She sees a scoot up a little bit. Machado has her knees facing the left right now. Half guard for McCormick. Relentless pressure from the Irish woman. Ireland's going to go 2 0 tonight. And Shane and I are going to tie our beer bet. <laughs> 42 seconds left, and McCormick's going to win this fifth and final round. We'll end it. Ground and pound. Rip Machado UFC call up. Back up to their feet. Oh, no, just McCormick is back up to her feet. Final 15 seconds of Machado's so tired she can't even get back up to her feet. And no. There's 10 seconds. There is no way Machado's getting a finish. And McCormick's just getting points here, kicking the legs of Machado. And that is it. That is it. That is it, baby. That is it. Andrew, we are about to see a new champion. What a battle. Look, only one and the Irish flag being thrown in the cage. Honestly, one bad fight on the card. The rest, pretty damn good. I'm back. Guess who's back? McCormick, what a comeback. What a comeback. Yeah, she was near finished in the first round. Could have been a draw if that first round was 10-8. Well, you know what? I fucking hate draws in championship fights. And I bet and I bet in, Sh in uh, Shane and my head-to-head -head beer bet that McCormick would, would win. The underdog will prevail. Even put it this way, even if McCormick got a draw, even even if the fight was a draw, I, I tip my tip my toque, tip my cap to McCormick because she adjusted her game plan and did not stop. Right at the beginning, she was like, Okay, I cannot stand and bang with this chick. And she decided that I'm just gonna pin her up against the cage and fight for that dominant position and take down, lay a couple shots on the exit, lay some knees to the body, and just continue to wear her out. And it worked. It all comes down to this. The, ca uh, the cage prey is boring, but it was her only chance. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, it, it was a boring style, but at least she did some other things. Like when she employed the takedown, she ground and pounded her. When she was on the exit of the clinch, she at least threw an elbow or so. Ref was real close to Machado when she was uh, spraying them shots. No, absolutely. Look, credit where credit is due. Machado did almost finish the fight. <laughs> She's so beat up, man. And no! Invicta strawweight champion Danny McCornan after her face getting beaten up. That's what's crazy about this is she got beaten up in that first round and adjusted her game plan to get the win. Danny was holding her against the cage so Val wouldn't run. Looks like an orc from the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> You're not wrong. Don't. Three, four. The first Irish woman to be champion in Invicta. Folks, we just witnessed history. Oh, she's... Super emotional. She said, uh, 
Ireland, wake up. You have the first Invicta Women's World Champion, and her name is Danny McCormick. Are you being live on the weekend? Yes, sir, Andrew. If this was one and they based it on the fight as a whole, I think Machado would have won. Do you guys agree with that in the chat? I don't, Shane. Again, Machado won, like, was dominant in one round. So, Shane, I think actually if that was the case, I think Machado would have scored less, personally. Because there was a one dominant round by Machado. Right? And again, it's not round by round. There was one moment of the fight, one section of the fight where Machado was dominant. The rest wasn't, right? But I guess, you know what, Shane? You might have... Uh, it's tough, Shane, because it's not like Machado defended straight up takedowns. She just made it hard for McCormick to take her to the ground. So I know in one championship, if you straight up defend a takedown, you get points for. It. Hmm, that's that's a good point you bring towards towards Shane. Oh man, McCormick is that her coach or her husband or? Oh, this is an emotional speech, ladies and gentlemen. Her face is swollen as fuck. Valence is not a chance. Oh, and she's dedicating it to her mother. It's her fucking birthday, folks. It's her birthday. Happy birthday to you, champ. Happy birthday to you. Bring that belt home to Ireland with pride. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Wow. Thank you for the five cents, CPM, Jules. Invicta does get one thing right. They have an atom weight division. Her face is all beating them up. Yeah, but Shane, it was from one, it was from a five minute increment. You know what I mean? It, like, so, so you're saying that one five minute increment of the fight is going to trump the entire rest the entire 20 other minutes of the fight were theoretically well not even theoretically where, where McCormick was dominating that's the thing like I understand your point and that's why I asked the chat because it's interesting but I don't know this is one of those cases where like McCormick did put it this way if only half the fight McCormick adjusted her game plan then absolutely absolutely but my pushback is it was pretty much the rest of the fight, you know. There was one other round where, well, we we all like collectively gave it to Machado. I get it, but it's not like there was only one small portion of the fight where she adjusted and went for the pressure game for the the grappling game. Damn her, bro! I'm like, cause. Uh, I'm watching Very Tough Girl from Ireland. Absolutely. That's her brother. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Danny got stung by a, by a bees and wasps. Happy birthday to Danny. Happy birthday to you. Once again, I raise my Guinness to the new Invicta FC Strawweight. Happy birthday, Danny girl. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. I agree, and I think we all collectively agreed. But what I'm still saying is she still employed that dominant ground. It, she didn't, like, lose a round dominantly like she did that first round. And the other one's McCormick just... No, she didn't just have control. To, Shane, what the fuck fight were you watching, man? You're just salty because your fighter lost, honestly. Seriously, what, what, what fight were you watching? It wasn't... She. And I, how many times you can you can rewind the tape? How many times was I even commenting in real time that she wasn't just holding on to her Marab style? She was clinching, advancing the clinch position, and and landing shots every single time she was in the clinch. Every time they were in the clinch, she was landing shots to the side ahead. She landed elbows on the exit, and then in the fourth and fifth round, she actually was tagging Machado with punches more than Machado was tagging her. Look. Machado could have gotten a 10, 10 8 in the first round. I was arguing devil's advocate. And in that case, yeah, it, it, it probably should have been a draw. 
I don't think this was an, a robbery. Dude, oh my god, again, but you're just you're just disregarding points in MMA now? Is like that's what I don't understand. Like we don't have the significant strikes up in front of us, but I guarantee you Machado outstruck her by like fucking 30 or 40 strikes. Be, on, like I, I don't know. That that's my opinion. I don't know what the chat is. I'm getting fired up here, Shane. <laughs> Yo, yeah, damage wise, you're right, but that damage came from one round. So you got to think about recency bias. McCormick took the last two rounds. See, I think there's more recency bias in one championship than there is in uh, in uh, in straight up judges scoring. Personally, Shane, what are you thinking? <laughs> and well, Andrew, you you flip flop and you agreed with Shane just a moment ago. <laughs> I would do just based on sticking in there. She's a dog and did what she had to do. Look. It was a good, it was, I, I'm actually very impressed because I'm impressed with both of the girls personally. Cause like Machado came in swinging, dominantly won that first round, had the plan of, okay, I can swing with this chick and actually knock her down. I have the power. She tried to do that. The rest of the fight got one more round. Totally agree. What was it? The second or third round? The third round she got. Um, but McCormick's game plan, I mean, this is mixed martial arts. You're allowed to do that. You get judged on that control time. And it's not like she just laid on her. She landed more strikes. Enough that trumps damage. Enough that trumps two rounds. Was it close? Yeah, it wasn't an absolute domination. But in my opinion, given that that first round wasn't a 10-8, she like that... I'm not surprised she won at all. We all collectively thought she was going to win by the end of that fifth round. Okay, in one, you have in one 100% you have a case, I think. And 95% you have a case. I agree with you more than Shane. Adam boy. Danny's a very tough warrior. Rounds three to five, Machado. Well, I think round three, Machado had. Round two, McCormick won. And then round one, Machado won. <laughs> Benjamin, obviously Machado should have won because she's prettier. <laughs> no, I I love the fire, Shane. I love that you're feeling the fire, you know, especially since like I'm still not feeling good. The fact that I even can get emotional by this, that's what I love. That's what these chats are all about. I'd, I'd, I'd rather have conversations and, and go back and forth and throw some jabs back and forth and give our opinions passionately than just like, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. But, uh, wow, the fact, you know, what's to bring it all back full circle, Shane, the fact that we are even arguing about this means that it was a pretty good fight means that the event wasn't a complete flop, which let's be honest, some, some of Victor cards, they are flops. This one, other than that one fight, the robbery in Shane's mind, it was a pretty damn good card. Again, I, I loved the second fight. I think it was fight of the night. I, I mean, Shane called it right away. Right when that second fight happened, Shane was like, this was fight of the night. That was awesome. Especially seeing that they were they were young women as far as their MMA careers went, right? I'm just looking back right now. Yeah, one was 2-0. and oh, One was 1-0. Uh, and oh. Amanda Macchiocci was 1-0. Oh. Uh, Sayuri Cannon was 2-0. and oh. Suri Cannon comes back after getting dominated in that first round. Man, that was my favorite part of this fight card for sure. Bum, 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 bum. Machado round one and three. I'll give a 10 out of 10 with Machado. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, buddy. Friday fights. We're going to do it. Great card. Super entertaining except for the co-main. Yep. Yeah. Except for one mulligan, which again, for an Invicta card, that is a win, baby. Good night, brother. Peace. You're the man, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Best fight of the night was the one when the fighters did nothing. <laughs> no. No. You're going to get me fired up more than Shane did, Jules. <laughs> All right, folks, you know the drill. I'm going to give every single one of you a shout out, and then we are going to hang up the gloves. I'm going to get some sleep, and then I will see you folks again live Friday morning, 
Friday midday and Friday evening. Oh, absolutely, Foul One. Thank you, as always, for joining, brother. Shout out to Foul One. Th shout out to Judy V, Jules. Thank you so much for joining. Andrew B, Diego, Zinus, Benjamin. Thank you so much for joining, Benjamin, as always. Benjamin with comment of the night. I hear Veronica say for it is, stop the fight. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, shout out to Shane. Shane, you got me fired up tonight. I fucking love it, brother. I fucking love it. You know, this is how, you know what I love about this, Shane? If you're even still here, you're a fucking MMA fan now. You ain't a casual anymore, brother. The fact that we're going toe to toe, being able to argue, because like, sh you could be right. You could be right. I'm just standing my ground, brother. The fact that you, Shane, exclusive member of this channel, are no longer a casual. You are a fucking MMA fan now. I fucking love it, dude. Thank you so much for joining. Shout out to you, Gravedigger Jones. Activate A. Thank you so much for joining as well, brother. Uh, da, 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 da. Bum, 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 bum. It wasn't a huge crowd, but you guys stayed throughout this entire fight. So I love it. Professor Chaos, thank you so much for joining Professor Chaos. I appreciate you. Professor Chaos was here from the beginning. Coco Ong, thank you so much for joining Coco Ong, despite spamming the chat. Um, bum, 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 bum. I think there was only one other person who joined. Oh, Mr. Grant Gregory. How can I forget? Mr. Grant Gregory, thank you so much for joining. Another exclusive member here on the channel. Mr. Grant Gregory and I are going to be doing a collaboration for his channel tomorrow, folks. So stay tuned for that. It will drop probably Friday or Saturday. You'll have to ask him. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. My prediction video is going to drop tomorrow evening or Friday morning at latest as well, folks. JL, shout out to you, JL. Thank you so much for joining. Don't be horrible. Thank you so much for joining. Don't be horrible. Who else? Uh, the City of Sunrise, Tom. Please go support City of Sunrise and Gravedigger Jones Twitch channel. Go support them because they support us. Uh, da, 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 da. Almost at the top, folks. Bear with me. Just a couple more minutes here. We give everyone a shout out. Shout out Luke Benyon. Shout out to you, Luke Benyon. Thank you so much for joining. Adebayu. Thank you so much, Adebayu, for joining as well. <laughs> Rest in peace, Joe Rogan. So sad. I can't believe I didn't know that that was a fucking meme. Uh, can't wait for UFC 286. Who you got in the main event Saturday? We're going with. As I cue up the soundboard. Look at me now! Leon Rocky Edwards, let's go, baby. See you Friday, everyone. Shout out to all you. You all are amazing. I appreciate you all. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that bell for notifications. Comment on the video after it's posted, and I will see you folks live Friday morning for one championship. Noon for KSW and in the evening for BKFC. And then Saturday for UFC 286. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. Thank you all for joining. You all are amazing. I will see you on the next live stream. Full day of fights on Friday plus Saturday. Stay tuned for the prediction video and my collaboration with Mr. Grant Gregory. And I'll see you on the next live stream. Peace, folks. Thank you so much. And new Ireland goes 2-0 tonight, baby. You all are amazing. Have a great night. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.